Hello and welcome to day four of the Speedo Aquatics GB Swimming Championships here in London's beautiful Aquatic Centre. Home of the London 2012 Olympics, it seems fitting that we host the trials for the 2024 Paris Olympics and Paralympics right here. Over the last four days, we have seen some of the most epic racing. We've been crowning British champions and, of course, selecting those teams to head to Paris for the summer. Who's going to take it tonight? Well, we're going to have to wait and see, but stick around because it's going to be some fast racing and we're going to be sending some of our athletes to Paris. We know what it takes to achieve a dream. Dedication, courage, determination, control, desire. And our goal is to channel that energy. To champion the nation's best aquatic athletes. Support the teams who support them inspire anyone and everyone to feel the benefits of a love of water and propel each sport onwards and upwards or even downwards by doing it the right way sustainably with integrity with purpose because the thrill of seeing great britain being great at aquatic sport is something everyone can get excited about We are Aquatics GB. Hello and welcome to day four of the Speedo Aquatics GB Swimming Championships here in London. Uh, it is fantastic to, to be back here. We have done three nights of finals and we have three to go. We are officially halfway. Not only are we crowning our British champions, we're selecting our teams to the Olympics and Paralympics over the summer. So let's take a look at where we stand so far. Currently on the swimming program, we have Kiana McInnes, uh, Freya Colbert, Abby Wood, Medi Harris, Lucy Hope, Adam Peaty, Ollie Morgan, Kathleen Dawson. It is a big list already. Dan Jervis, Anna Hopkin, Max Litchfield, Matt Richards, Duncan Scott, Tom Dean, and Alex Cahoon. Now, how does this selection policy work? Well, if they hit the nomination time and touch first in a final, they're going to Paris. If they hit the nomination time and come second, they are nom they've hit that time, but it is down to the selectors. It is a discretionary choice as to whether or not they're making the team. So as you can see, the Paris nomination times for Laura Stevens, Jonathan Marshall, and Katie Shanahan are a second place nomination time. They're gonna have to wait a long wait to the end of the week to see if they are on it. And of course, uh, over in Doha earlier on this year, we qualified our open water teams for the 10 kilometer. That was Hector Pardo, Tobias Robinson, and Leah Crisp. They have qualified. Uh, you're going to see some of them swimming here this week as well, but of course, going to be there for that, uh, that open water. Now, the para events work just a little bit differently. So they need to hit their nomination time for their classification, but it comes down to selection. There is only a certain number of para athletes that can be taken per event. There is only a certain number of men versus the a number of women that can go. So. You can see some that have already hit that time. Megan Neve, Louise Fitters, Susanna Hext, Tully Kearney, Scarlett Humphrey, Eliza Humphrey, Alice Ty, Poppy Maskell, Brock Whiston, Olivia newman Baronis, uh, Jessica Jane Applegate and Georgia Sheffield have hit that time, but did it in fourth place. So currently will not be going unless one of the athletes pulls out. We just wanted to let you guys know that they had hit that time. Uh, Stephen Clegg, William Ellard, Mark Thompson and Cameron Vernecombe have all done it. It is going to come down to the selectors, okay, for the power events. But uh, two of the names that you did see on that list are joining me in the studio right now. They're going to Paris, they're going to the Olympics. So excited to have you guys here. Ollie Morgan, Matt Richards, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for having us. The Olympics is done. It must be a huge weight off, off your backs to know that, you know, that time is done, you're on the team, you've just got the rest of the week of racing. Yeah, definitely. It was a good bit of relief, you know, uh, finishing the race and knowing I'd made that time and I was in first place. So it's great to be going to my first Olympics. Um, certainly thrilling and to kind of take that pressure away from my 200 in, later in the week and just have some fun with it. Um, yeah, it's going to be good fun. Uh, and you know, you mentioned it was your first Olympics. Matt's your second, but it's going to be your first with a crowd. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait. I mean, we've seen the crowd here this week. It's been fantastic. I mean, yeah, I think that's been a great little warm up for us. Um, and I think that crowd in Paris is going to be exceptional. So it's going to be awesome to, to experience that and be a part of it. And um, yeah, as Ollie said, it's you know it's great to be part of the team and, and know that I'm going to be on that train. I mean, you guys have been doing amazing performances this week, and you know some of the people at home may have missed it. So let's take a look, Ollie. I'm going to start with you. This was your race. I want you to talk us through it. British record, 15 years gone. So talk us through your race here. Well, I mean, it started off with a bit of stress. Um, obviously, the lame rope broke. Then my goggles actually broke before I came out, but um, managed to get them fixed and. 
Yeah, you know, it started off um, the first 50 went really well. Uh, just hitting everything that we talked about in, in training and everything, you know, you practice every day. And um, yeah, just came down that last 50 as hard as I could, held, held Johnny off and uh, yeah, touching the wall in a British record, it was... I can't yeah. really put into words how it felt. It was just, yeah, exhilarating. And, you know, you said you broke that British record, right? You, you said to me, you know, you knew it was in sight, you knew it was achievable. Did you know you were going to do that one day? Was that like, this is mine? I think you do, you do everything in training that you possibly can help you get to that stage, but um, you never know what's going to happen on the day. And I think I kind of took that pressure off of myself in the terms of thinking about what time I wanted to go. I just kept that an open mind and hit it as hard as I could and whatever time I came away with, that was what, what happened on the day. You know, uh, I just, we, well, I watched you last year at British Champs, right? You did that three P, you hit all the all the backstrokes and then you kind of stepped up onto the world stage. We had you in Fukuoka, you're both there, both had great performances. You know, you stepped onto that world stage and hit ninth twice, you know. They say the worst place to be is fourth and ninth, but for a first outing, you know, were you happy with that? Yeah, I was certainly thrilled, you know, ninth, ninth in the world is, not something you can complain about on your first kind of world stage, but um, I kind of kept that hunger, you know, not not making it that first time and having that that chance to kind of go again. You know, it was obviously gutting in the 200, but then I had that opportunity in the relay to to go on and, and push even more and came away with another PB in that. So it was it was a great time as well being part of that medley relay. I know Matt was on it with me, so yeah, we had a good fun in that, and hopefully we can build on that going into Paris now. Oh, I can't wait to see that medley relay. We're in a real good spot for that as well. I'm super yeah. excited for it. And Matt, I'm going to come to you because I want to look at your race. That men's 100 free from last night. Epic way to finish the night. It, the depth of talent there is just incredible. So, you know, what was it like being in that race? Uh, very cagey, for sure. I mean, it was, a, it was a hell of a field. I mean, I think we had like 12 guys go sub 49 in the morning, which is unbelievable for Britain. That's the kind of thing you only really see in America. So I knew going into that it would be a hell of a race, I think. Me, myself, Duncan, um, Dino, you know, all of us maybe would have liked to have gone a little bit faster individually, mm. but um, in a race like that where there's that much depth, it's very difficult to, to chase a time. You've just kind of got to race the race and, and focus more on the position rather than the time. So, um, you know, I think all of us have far more to give on that and far more time to drop when the summer rolls around and that 4 by one relay comes. But as Ollie said, you know, that 4 by one medley is also looking really exciting. We know, you know, three quarters of that team now and tonight we'll find the, the 100 flyboys will we'll finish that full spot. Well, look, I can't wait to see. I really am super excited for it. I think we've got, you know, the depth of talent here across all four of those strokes is looking really good for Aquatics GB. Um, and speaking of, I caught up with the, uh, the performance director for Aquatics GB, Chris Bice, earlier. He had a few words about sort of where we sit halfway through the week. So let's take a look at what he had to say. It's been a great week so far. Halfway through, I just want to get your thoughts. How's it been on your end? Yeah, look, really good, John. We've been swimming really, really well. We've got about 18 athletes that have hit the consideration times and individuals and relays already. It's already well ahead of where we would normally be this time of the meet. So, yeah, we're really, really pleased. I mean, does that uh, make it a little bit stressful as we sort of head into the second half for you guys? Because there's <laughs> those discretionary picks, but, you know, they're getting less, I suppose, as more people qualify. Yeah, and that's a challenge because there's a limited number of places mm. and, you know, we have to work through it day by day. But... All I can say is if we swim fast, there'll be less discretion and you know, all the better from our point of view if we get many on the team that, that hit the time in the table. So it's looking good. And was that a bit of a surprise, I suppose, because we had you know, we had world champs in Doha earlier this year and it's been an interesting cycle, trying to get the, the taper and the cycle right for those athletes. They seem to have, have done it, but it's a difficult thing to do. Definitely, and we swam through in Doha. No one rested and tapered for it, and I think we're seeing the result of that, that, that here. We had some people that were, you know, it was really tough for them in Doha because they were unrested. Yeah. But now that they're here, they're, they're, they're kind of they're relishing in that now because it's almost easier here because they're racing tapered and, and ready to go. But of course, they've got lots of pressure. That men's 100 free last night was outstanding. Oh, I can't wait for the two at the end of the week as yeah. well. Um, you know, it, it, bringing it back to that, we've got a few more days of racing left. What are you wanting to see or what are you hoping to see or some performances you're looking maybe for some surprises? Yeah, look, we like to see new new people pop up and we've seen that already in the first three days you know in the men's hundred back two great young men that are you know just really performing out of their skins so you know we'd like to see the older ones too doing well and you saw that in the hundred free you know when the chips are down the big boys come to play and you know that was an amazing race 
There you have it, wise words from a wise man. But of course, what have we got to look forward to tonight? Let's take a look at this evening's schedules for day four of finals. We're starting our event with a men's 100 meter butterfly. What a way to start. Uh, we then move into the women's 400 meter freestyle events. The second half of our program is gonna be the men's 50 meter breaststroke event. Uh, that is a Paris para final only. Uh, we then move into the women's 200 meter backstroke. Now you'll see there is no para final there. That is because that is not a Paralympic event. And then we finish the night with the men's 200 meter individual medley. It's gonna be a great way to finish the night. Now, I uh, am gonna be taking you through the para events bit by bit as we move throughout tonight's program. Um, I'm gonna give you more information of each of the athletes and of course, what's coming up in those races. But since we had the boys here, I'm gonna take uh, a bit more of a focus on the swimming program because I wanna get your thoughts, all right? So we're gonna start with that men's uh, 100 meter butterfly, a great way to start the night. Uh, it's gonna be Jacob Peters and James Guy going head to head. There's Jimmy. Matt, give us your thoughts. Yeah, I think that race is going to be phenomenal. You know, not just James and, uh, and, and Jacob. I think Ed Mildred's looking great. Josh Gammon, obviously, on the two fly, did a fantastic job. Jamie Ingram, too. You know, it's going to be a really stacked field, that. But I think we can expect Jacob to go out really quick and probably Jimmy to bring it back really fast, too. So it's going to be a, a right, right down to the wire, that one. And I mean, we saw that this morning, Jacob hit that time. He was like bang mm. on that time. Uh, the nomination time is 51.56. Um, but he's got to do it in the final, which has been an interesting thing with the selection policy, right? It's like, you've got to do it in that Paris final. It doesn't matter if you do it before then. But I, I think it's going to be a great way to start the evening, 100%. Yeah, totally. No, I really, I totally agree. I think, I reckon Jacob will get that done tonight. I think Jimmy probably will too. We could see multiple guys under that time. So it's going to be, it's going to be down to who gets the hand on the wall. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, moving on to the next event it's of course that uh, women's 400 meter freestyle uh amelie blockstage she you know is this sort of up and coming superstar i suppose um in distance swimming she's 14 years old the 1500 meter uh, british champion twice now um she's gone head to head with leah crisp now leah is qualified already in the open water 10k there's leah um but you know ollie i wanted to ask you you sort of had your breakout last year right and have stepped onto the world stage but starting to see amelie do that at like 14 do you have any words of advice for her? I think just keep enjoying it. Um, that's something that we focus on quite a lot at Birmingham is just turning up to training and, and enjoying what you do. And I think it takes that pressure away of coming into these big meets. And, and you, I think athletes can get kind of lost in, in their thoughts and lost in the, process of the processes of a meet. And I think it's that enjoyment that is what gets me through it for sure. Like, I love racing. I, I know Matt definitely loves racing as well. And I think it's something that the youngsters need to keep open in, in their minds is that it's what they enjoy doing and they shouldn't get lost in you know times and, and expectations it should just be you turn up and you get everything done that you, that you can and you, you enjoy yourself. Well, yeah, that's there what, it is, a bit yeah. of advice. Wise words, we love to see it. Um, now we're moving on to the women's 200 meter back. This is Katie Shanahan. She hit the time, came second in that 400 IM, but this is her main event. Uh, she, like this morning, took a foot off the gas in that final 25, was sort of saying the coach said, just get the job done, get in the final, third fastest qualifier. But she's the one to beat here, right? Yeah, I think she had a really good world um, and you know, moving into this, she's obviously the favorite on paper, but there's a couple others that, that could be there. You know, Kathleen had a really good 100. Um, I know Honey Ulster and she had a really good time at Bucks. So I don't think she's got it all, all her way, but I think, you know, she, she might show her class. Definitely. We'll see what happens. I'm the one to watch for sure. And we're finishing with a bang. Just before we go to our first race, let's take a look. It's that women's, two, uh, men's, sorry, 200 IM, Max Litchfield, Duncan Scott, uh, oh, Tom Dean. It's a big one, isn't it, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that race is really, really exciting. I think, you know, you'd expect to see Tom and Duncan really smashing that out. But Max has been on fantastic form, as we saw with the British record on the 4 IM the other night. So. I think that really will be a three horse race. And uh, you know, we need to see, again, it's gonna come right down to the wire. All these races tonight are gonna be, be really exciting for us to watch as, as spectators. Yeah, I mean, it may, like you say, it makes it exciting for us to watch. I don't know if it's exciting to race like that because you're like, uh, you know, who's gonna do it? But certainly for us on this end, it, it does as well. There it is, we see Duncan Scott going in. He was looking great this morning. I have no idea who is yeah. gonna take that at all. Like literally no idea. It's I think Duncan did look phenomenal it. this morning. It looked so easy. And to go at 158, looking that <laughs> easy, it didn't even look like he started. It wasn't so. even blowing when he got yeah. out. No, he was like, I know. Right. Yeah, it <laughs> I think, was phenomenal. Yeah. And yeah. Duncan, you know, the, some of the facial expressions he can pull after a race yeah. when he puts everything into it. And to make yeah. it look so easy this morning and go at 58, it's, yeah, it's, he's looking pretty good. Well, look, thank you so much for coming down and having a chat with me. I know we got more events for you guys on the Sunday, last day racing. That men's two free is going to be amazing. You two back, 
Good luck with them, boys. Um, I can't wait Thank to see what you do over the summer. Congrats on the Olympics. Um, but we're going to head over to our first race now. So it's over to Andy Jamison and Paul Noble in commentary. Let's get into the action. Well, thank you, John, and it's uh, going to be a fantastic evening, this one. Really looking forward to it. Fabulous summer as well, then, from the boys. That's, uh, that was really interesting to listen to. I might use a couple of those lines <laughs> during the evening. Well, not only myself and uh, Paul Noble, but delighted again to be joined for these finals by Molly Renshaw, a double Olympic finalist in the 200 metres breaststroke. World champion, short course, 200 breaststroke. This uh, men's 100 fly. Oh, it's going to be a massive, uh, big final coming up with, uh, with those big boys fairly quickly. Jacob Peters, Ed Mildred, James Guy, Josh Gammon. But this, the first, the junior final of the men's 100 metres butterfly. Henry Gray ran in the centre. Won a bronze in the A final of the 200 fly, two minutes point nine. Three and a half seconds underneath the uh, European junior consideration time. Great meet he's having in four. Simpton in five. So lanes four and five did make the European junior consideration time for the 200 metres butterfly. This the 100, a very different event, 100 to 200. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this 100 butterfly is all about pacing. I think the 200, like we spoke about a lot this week around easy speed and trying to take it out um, nice and steady on the first 100 and build him through. But I don't think there's too much room for that here. I think the guys need to attack the first 50 and then see what they can bring home. Well, first to turn, uh, right at the bottom there is Thomas Maskell of Northumberland and Durham, the 18-year-old. He's, uh, he's still a junior, so he can qualify for the European juniors. The time he's targeting is 55-0. He's still going well. He's just outside of that shot there on the white, white hat right at the bottom. Starting to come through in the centre, though. In lane number four is Henry Gray, the Chelsea and Westminster swimmer there. Having a great meet, Chelsea and Westminster. The time they're looking for, 55-0-3. Oh, 54-5. Wow, well, his lifetime best was 55 1. He's just gone 54 5. Oh, yes. <laughs> great stuff. Well done. Wow. Yeah, great swim there from Henry. As you said, he's been on fire all week, and Lisa runs such a good program over in Chelsea. So nice to see all them doing well. And I think we've got Nicholas Finch coming from the next, um, the next final two, also under Lisa Bates. We do. So Henry Gray wins it for Chelsea Westminster 54 5. Great lifetime best for him. Thomas Mask the second, Jack Brown third. In the B final, Nick Finch, another Chelsea Westminster swimmer, and again fastest seed into the final. This is the B final. He's ranked 9 through 16 after the heats this morning. And he swam a really good lifetime best to qualify fastest for this B final. He's the fastest junior in the competition, no juniors in the uh, A final. One of the first times we've seen that, juniors have done really well here. Yeah, swimming really well, and I think we've seen kind of Chelsea and Westminster, Leeds, uh, Repton as well, all producing really fast times. Trend of the big guys really is to give themselves a good old slap right before, right before they uh, get going, really heighten the senses. There you go, look at that, gracious me. The B final, the men's 100 fly. Nick Finch, the fastest seed, the junior. The youngest in the field. In four. Take your marks. We're saying uh, Nick Finch is the youngest in the field from Chelsea Westminster in lane four. Actually, Dean Fern, right at the top from Aberdeen Dolphins, is only 16. Nine national age group records he holds, but uh, really good starts right in the centre. Maybe in five at the moment, it's Jamie Robertson from uh, University of Stirling. Yeah, and I think we can expect to see Nick go out quite fast here as well. I think he's more tailored to kind of the 50 and 100 metre events. So nice to see him turn them further, but first was Jamie Robertson in a 24.69. Well, tied for first, actually, with the youngster right at the top there as well, Dean Fern. That was... Uh, don't often see that, but now down this second uh, second 50 metres, 20 metres to go in this, the B final of the men's 100 metres butterfly. Again, the junior consideration time, which uh, only uh, lane four can do, is 55.0. All the rest of them are seniors. Looks like in five, Jamie Robertson's going to get it. I think he does, yeah. 53-2. Wow, well, that's really quick. 53-2 wins it, Jamie Robertson. 
second Brody Gordon Gibson of Edinburgh University 53-3-3 and uh, third was Thomas Beely 53-6 great second 50s from all of those guys yeah really strong and I think we saw a few of these guys in the 200 area this week so probably finishing this week off with 100 so in first place lane 5 Jamie Robertson in 53-22 closely followed by Brody Gordon and Gibson in a 53-3 well, what a race that was. Uh, now, back to John in the studio. Now, coming up next is, of course, our uh, first para event, our para Paris final for the men's 100-meter butterfly. It is important for those of you at home to know uh, that this is a multi-class event, so they're each going to be looking for different times depending on their classification. Uh, Stephen Clegg, he's in lane five. He did the time this morning. He's going to be the closest to it. Cameron Verncombe in lane four as well was very, very close. He's going to be trying to hit that time tonight from lane four. And, of course, don't forget Stephen's brother. Brother James Clegg out in lane one. Uh, he got a bronze medal in this event in London 2012, going for his uh, next Paralympics 12 years later. So keep an eye out for them, and it's back to the racing, back to Paul Noble. Thanks, John. And there are the uh, multi class swimmers about to come out for this 100 meters butterfly final. Rowan Brennan, that uh, orange cap. Oh, Baz London Phoenix, he will lead them out. Great swim he had yesterday in the 100 freestyle to take a bronze medal. And there's James Clegg, John was mentioning. Great to see him back in the water again alongside his brother. What a games that he had in 2012, James Clegg. Here's Ollie Carter, <laughs> almost a trademark entrance there from Ollie Carter. Commonwealth Games swimmer, lifetime best this morning in the qualification heats. Mark Thompson has already made a nomination time in the backstroke earlier on this week. S14 swimmers. Harry Stewart also an S14 swimmer from Plymouth Leander. Two more S14s and swimmers with an intellectual impairment. Will Ellard, what a swim he had in the 100 freestyle yesterday taking world record time in that 100 freestyle Stephen Clegg the world record holder in the S12 class visually impaired swimmer his brother just a few lanes across from him and Cameron Verncombe fastest time from this morning but not the highest points total but as John said times for these swimmers will be compared to the world best time in the previous two years for their own classifications if you hit a thousand points, you have equaled that world best time. Anything up in the 900, 800 range is a sensational swim. Cameron Verncombe had a, such a good swim this morning in the 100 fly and also in the 200 individual medley. There's Ollie Carter on the right. There he is. Lifetime best. And Ollie Carter and Rowan Brennan, two S10s, those are physical impairments. Well. Which really spots up for grabs for the Paralympic Games. So this could be a vital contest between the two and seven and eight. Firm favourite for this one though, Stephen Clegg in lane five. Men's 100 butterfly, Para, Paris final. Now Stephen Clegg set that world record of years ago, 56.75, the so world champion in 2022, silver medalist in Tokyo. And the Paralympic Games, silver medalist at last year's world championships. And a good start though by William Ellard, world record breaking form. He was in the 100 freestyle and he leads them through. What a start, 25.68 for Ellard, followed by Vern Coombe. And Clegg is, well, he's just outside his own world record pace, the visually impaired swimmer in lane number five. But look at Ellard, well, British record stands at 54.46 with the world record, 54.18. Ellard on sparkling form here in London, coming into the finish now, 54.46, the British record, and he's just outside that, but another sensational swim from him. And the nomination times achieved by Ellard and by Clegg, 57-66 for Clegg. And Ollie Carter getting in ahead of Rowan Brennan, that could be vital for the two S10s. 
Well, Stephen Clegg, he will be the highest points earner, I think. 955 points, 57. 66 for Stephen Clegg, and that will be the highest, uh, a little bit better than he went in the heats and the highest points earner of them all. 57-66 for Stephen Clegg. Ellard, what a swim that was. 55-45. Fantastic stuff. So at the start, it was pretty even. Stephen Clegg got a good start, good underwater, but once they got into the swim, look at the power of Will Ellard there in lane number three. He's absolutely sensational. He was only 18 yesterday. And there's talk of him even challenging the, the European junior times for able body swimmers. Fantastic swimmer, Will Ellard. Fantastic find for the GB para team. But it was Stephen Clegg who came out on top, the class of the field. 966 points is not hanging about at all. And they are a medalist. Are now congregating in the middle, as we've seen as customary on the first nights of competition. There's the crowd. It's Maisie Summers Newton. And now we can go to John. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, can I please get a round of applause for our British champions? Now, Stephen, you have had a busy week, mate, a busy, busy week. World uh, record holder in this event. You know, you did the time this morning. You've just come out here and done it again. You're performing, uh, you know, on a great path, I suppose, as we head towards the Paralympics. Yeah, you know, um, it's been a tough week, uh, three days on the trot, and. Uh, I'm a bit of an older guy now, so it, it takes out of me these days. But um, you know, overall, it's been a really solid week so far in terms of performances. Um, it's kind of sitting near the top of the table, world table in every event so far, which is really good and looking good at going into Paris. And you know, I just want to say thank you to the crowd, and it's been a been one hell of a week and a great experience. Yes, well, look, congratulations, mate. Well done. Another British Championship title. And Will, I'm coming over here because you got a silver medal, you hit that time, but I just have to mention to everyone in here, you broke a world record the other day in the heats, which is pretty amazing. Can we get a round of applause for that? So, tell me, what are you thinking? Um, yeah, the world record yesterday was good. Uh, um, the flight at the end uh, hurt towards the end, uh, jammed the finish a bit, but it's the second PB, I wasn't expecting that, so. Yeah. And I know you're swimming the 200 IM later tonight, so this uh, gives you a bit of confidence? Yeah, um, especially like first legs fly, so um, it gives me like that, uh, like easy speed yeah. um, at the start, so yeah. hopefully I'll be good later. Well, look, well done, congratulations on that silver medal. You crushed it, mate, didn't you? Now, Cameron, I know you're a little nervous, but don't worry, buddy. You got a, a bronze medal there. Are you happy with your race? It was okay. Yeah. I think need to improve on things. Yeah. And you're swimming the 2 IM with Will later as well, so you're feeling good, you're feeling fresh for that? I, I, sort of. Okay, well look, I can't wait to see what you do there, mate. You got yourself a bronze medal though, you crushed it. Didn't they crush it, ladies and gentlemen? Give it up for your British medalists! They certainly did crush it, John. And well... Got a little bit of time before they go to the 200 individual medley, Will and Cameron. Stephen can have a little bit of a rest. Andy Rubin making the presentation, deputy chair of Pentland Brands. Cameron Vernkoom made a nomination time. And this morning in the 200 IM, Will Ellard and Stephen Clegg both made the nomination times in this one. And don't be surprised if you'll see these swimmers at the Paris Paralympic Games, three medalists in the 100 meters butterfly. Now, we move on to the A final. This should be very exciting. James Guy and Jacob Peters had great swims this morning in the heats. And after those heats, they caught up with John Mason. James, gonna to come to you first. Uh, last night, you know, you made that final for the 100 free. Um, decided to pull out that to focus on this event. Yeah, of course. I mean, the 100 free was never really kind of a priority in my eyes, it was just kind of, so it's been the 100 fly, 200 free. Um, but yeah, I wanted to take a go in the morning, but yeah, today and obviously the weekends is uh, obviously really important, but yeah, just good to this morning, get the job done, and then uh, faster tonight. 
And I mean, that looks super relaxed for a morning swimmer as well, you know, sort of taking it easy because it's going to be a battle with you boys this evening. Yeah, I've always found like, if you need to go hard, then don't do it. Um, try and save as much energy as you can during the race and for the, uh, the bigger sessions. So, but yeah, this morning was job done and uh, progressed tonight. We'd love to see it. And Jacob, bang on that time as well. Looking for that nomination time, of course, to make it to Paris. Return of British champion. Um, how did it feel going in there? Your first, first time in the pool? Um, yeah. It was a great swim. I mean, I've been itching to get going, really. Been here for a couple of days now, watching amazing swimming from everyone else. So I wanted to get in this morning, get the job done, like, Jay, like Jimmy said. Um, no need to go too hard in the, in the morning, but I wanted a good, strong swim this morning. And then, like, let's get emotional tonight and, you know, see what can, see what can happen. Get the job done right. Well, look, well done there. We'll see you later tonight. Off you go, boys. Good luck. Well, interesting. Both of the uh, big guys for this final, there's actually three of them, but uh, two of them, Jimmy Guy and Jacob Peters, both saying that they took it relatively easy in the heats. That's interesting. It really is. It's not that easy always to swim slower when you've been uh, practicing to go so fast. I never found it particularly easy to swim that slow, did you? No, and I think especially on butterflies, sometimes the slower you go, the harder it can feel. I think you want to kind of get out there, get into that rhythm and just really set the pace for the evening. But nice to see that they both had really relaxed heat swims and they think they can both move it on tonight. Well, let's hope so. There's Joe Litchfield. His uh, technical stuff starts and turns outstanding. Here he is, Jimmy Guys, the British record holder, double Olympic champion. I have to say, he looks very comfortable. Quite a few of these guys really looking forward to the men's 200 metres freestyle final, which is on the Sunday night, the very last event. Here's Jamie Ingram, though, seventh fastest in British history. He's in lane number three. And then Ed Mildred, he's fourth fastest in British history. So we've got the number one, two, four, seven, eight, ten, all in British history. Six of the top ten ever, including the top two. Jimmy Guy's in six, and Jacob Peters as well. He swam right on that uh, consideration time for the Olympics in the heats. Can't do it in the heats, but he's got to do it here. Would you prefer to do it in the heats or maybe just uh, go a little bit slower and uh, just focus on the final? Oh, I'm not too sure because it does add that little bit of pressure, you know, doing it in the morning is... I don't know. I think he said in his interview he was fairly relaxed until this morning. So hopefully in his mind he knows he can move on further and there'll be things to improve on from this morning. Well, look at these tattoos. He's got some serious tats. Look at that. Gracious me. Wow. Wow. Well, if he goes to uh, Marbella, they're all going to know, aren't they? <laughs> this, the final, the big final, the Paris final, the men's 100 metres butterfly. The time they're looking for, 51.56. We wouldn't normally get too interested in times, but they've got to go underneath that uh, consideration time. Litchfield there in two. Peters in four, Mildred in five, Guy in six, Ingram's not slow as well in three, Gammon in seven, won the 200. Who's going to win? Oh, I'm going to go Jimmy Guy. He's Jimmy a performer. Guy. Wow. Big call. Very tough to call, I've got to say. Peters, Guy, Mildred. Take your marks. <laughs> Well, on paper, the fastest by quite a way is James Guy. He's done the fastest four times in British history. But the second fastest man in British history is the fastest seed. He is the defending champion in lane number four, Jacob Peters. And Peters in the red hat has started very well in the centre. Yeah, really strong start from Jacob. He, he picked up a bronze medal at the World Championships in the 50 fly. So we know his front end is going to be really strong. Interesting to see what we see off this wall. I think you'll see really good underwater from lane two, which is Joe Litchfield, coached by David Hemmings. Well, it's a good first 50, but they're coming back at him and coming back pretty hard here. Mildred in five, and the black hat is really charging. Jacob Peters still leading the red hat, but it's getting close. Also going well is Litchfield in two. This is going to be mighty tight. Also coming back in seven is Gammon. Oh, my goodness me, who's going to get the touch here? Oh, who's got it? Litchfield's got it. 51-7. Wow, 51-7 wins at Litchfield in lane two. Second in seven was Josh Gammon. Third was Jacob Peters in four. And the times where they're just outside of the qualification standards, that's going to give the selectors a little bit of a headache, I've got to say. Goodness me, I wasn't expecting it to be slower than this morning. 
Look at the bottom there. And that black hat in seven. Josh Gammon, second. What a swim. 51 8. I, I, as soon as I saw Joe going down that first 50, I knew he could bring it home really strong. And like I said, such a technical swimmer. So, really holding on to that technique down the last 50 and just getting on the wall. He has just missed the qualifying time, but that puts him in a great position for the medley relay. Well, it really does. And the men's medley relay is very good. They need a fly swimmer. We've got a great backstroker now, Ollie Morgan, on that backstroke. We've got a pretty good breaststroker, somebody called Petey. But look at this. Who's going to get the fly split? Who's going to get the fly? <laughs> <laughs> Goggles all over the place. He's won in lane two. Litchfield. Wow. Joe Litchfield wins. 100 fly. I never expected to say that. 51 7. 11 100 back. Josh Gammon. He won the 200. Silver in the 100. 51 8. Jacob Peters third, Mildred fourth, James Guy fifth. That's a massive surprise. Well, ladies and gentlemen, can I get a round of applause for Joe Lichfield, your new British champion? <laughs> uh, Joe, you know, Jacob took that out really hard in that first 50, but your, your back end, your final 25 there was so good. Is that something you were focusing on? Yeah, I mean, this morning we knew, we saw that I had the fastest back end in the field, so this morning I had a bit too slow, so I just made sure I got out a bit faster. Yeah. At 50, I saw I was in the race, and I just put my head down and swam as fast as I could, really. I mean, you did such a good job. You turned sixth, you know, super relaxed in that first half, but you're British champion in, you know, a stacked field. Going into this race, it's sort of like, if you got a lane, you got a chance, and you did it, you're British champion. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I did this event three weeks ago in Edinburgh, and then I decided to do it at trials, so yeah. I wasn't going to do it until the last minute, so to come out of this British champion is unreal. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Look, congratulations, mate. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, you're British champion, Joe Richfield. <laughs> and Josh... You swam 0.7 faster than you did this morning. I know, you know, after your 200 the other day, you said to me, I'm going to get in with the big boys in the 100 and just see how it goes. And here you are a silver medalist. Yeah, well, that was just, that was awesome, really. Um, definitely easier than 200, but still, still pretty difficult. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Well, look, congratulations, mate. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua Gammon. And Jacob. Uh, you know, uh, putting a race uh, like that together, of course, on a stage like this, it's the sport. You, you go in with expectations or things, things happen. So why don't you talk me through that race? Um, well, I don't know. I'll have to kind of get back to the drawing board and have a, have a chat with my coach and see where exactly everything broke down. But, um, yeah, as you can imagine, a little bit disappointed with that race. But it is what it is, and we've got to move on and see what happens here. Look, well done on the bronze medal. Um, I've just had word, ladies and gentlemen, that the medal medley relay has qualified and Joe Litchfield is going to Paris. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your British medalists. Well, I'm still trying to get over that result. Gracious me, lanes two and seven, first and second. And inside them, England, Peters, Mildred, Guy. Goodness me. Andy Rubin, deputy chair of uh, Pentland Brands, presenting those medals. And of course, Pentland Brands includes Speedo. So, very important chap he is in the world swimming, isn't he? But uh, can you believe Molly Renshaw sitting next to me? Come on, Molly, make sense of that. I, I'm, I'm really happy for Joe. I know he swam the 100 freestyle yesterday and I don't think he was quite where he wanted to be there. And that was such a stacked field. So to kind of leave that behind him and bring the confidence into tonight's swim, I think, yeah, he's going to be really happy with that. We'll see him later in the week as well in the 200 freestyle. Well, from Molly Renshaw to Molly Baker, fastest seed in this, the junior final of the women's 400 metres freestyle. There's a 15-year-old, four 16-year-olds, a 17 and an 18. And oh, goodness me, I mean, just amazing. Just amazing. Well, uh, Joe Litchfield just walking past us, uh, thumbs up, just lobbed his medal to his mum and dad. <laughs> oh, goodness me, it's great to see. Well, here we go, Women's Fauna Freestyle Junior Final. The European Junior Championship uh, consideration times, 4.17, that's pretty tough. I've got to say, compared to uh, these ladies' best times, 4.22 is fastest seed. 
Yeah, and we've definitely still got some juniors coming up in the next few finals as well, so definitely keep an eye on that. We certainly do. There's two in the A final, including the second fastest seed, Emily Bloxich, the 14 year old. Take your marks. So the uh, junior final of the women's 400 meters freestyle. The uh, national age group record for the 16-year-olds uh, is 408. Goodness me, Holly Hibbert did it in 2016 in Hungary. 408 for a 16-year-old. I, th I think that's relatively safe here. It'll be interesting to see what uh, I mean, Broxage does in the in the big final, but uh, this is the junior final. I'm really pleased to see so many juniors getting a, a second chance, a second swim, because coming back certainly in a championship like this, where there's Olympic champions, world record holders around, there's so many superstars, world champions, to come back and get in that warm-up and get in the ready room alongside them, must be a great experience for these uh, young ladies. Yeah, amazing experience, and I think there's probably quite a few nerves going into the heat, you know, it's a big arena, there's big crowds, like you said, you're warming up with the likes of Adam Peaty and Abby Wood and probably idols that you've looked up to for a long time. So for them to kind of shake off the nerves in the heat, kind of blow off the cobwebs and then come back and really perform in the final is really exciting. I wonder how many of them have uh, been star spotting when they've been in and around the pool here. It is, it is fantastic. You know, it never really stops either. I don't know how you felt when you went to the Olympics, but to go ahead and, uh, you know, Maya is uh, quite a long time ago, but people like Sebastian Coe, Steve Ovet, some of the oldies will remember them. Um, who is that uh, fantastic uh, deck athlete, Daley Thompson, wearing the same tracksuit as Mandy Jameson? <laughs> yeah, it is an amazing opportunity. And at Olympic Games, you are in the athlete village, so you're there with all the other sports. and. I remember my first Olympics in Rio, seeing Usain Bolt up on his balcony, and it will stick in my memory forever, but just really iconic and inspiring to be around athletes like that. Did you wave to him? I did, yeah. Did you? <laughs> I didn't think you'd say yes. <laughs> well, it's on you. Well, did he wave back? I don't think so. Oh, come on, just say yes. Just pretend he did. Oh, I love that story. Molly Renshaw, I didn't know you did. That was great. I'm oh, it's fantastic. Girl. Yeah, well, I tell you what, I am as well. I've got a cracking photograph of one of the Olympics. I really did, given his old uh, lightning bolt. Anyway, speaking of lightning bolt, look at this uh, first 200 metres from the swim from Repton, the 16 year old in lane number two. It is uh, Jessica Smelt. And uh, she's gone off really well down this first 230 metres or so. Interesting part of the race, this. They've just gone through the halfway mark. This will be five lengths down, three to go. And uh, the big boys and girls tend to just start getting going at that half, halfway turn. And she seems to be one of them here. She's, she's swimming a pretty uh, mature race at the moment. Yeah, the pacing seems to look great here. And we touched on this earlier in the way, but freestyle is one of those events where you can sometimes um, negative split the event. So you see the likes of Molly Callahan on the 100 and 200 freestyle um, from Australia. She often negative splits all of those events. So it's definitely possible. It looks like she's pacing it great here into the last 100. Well, she's still leading, but um, we're starting to build up a little bit of a, a squad in the centre to start attacking her. In lane number four, it looks like Molly Baker getting ready to make a charge. Still leading though with 100 to go is Jessica Smelt of Repton. So it's Smelt up there in the blue hat in two, Baker in four. One lays closer to us from the red hat in lane five is Amelia John of City of Cardiff. Three 16 year olds all having a crack at this and they're doing really well. Yeah, lane five, Molly Baker in the red hat really pulling back now coming into this last turn. Oh, she does turn second. It's still Jessica Smelt in first, turning the 348-44. So 50 to go. The charge is on. And at the top there in lane two, Jessica Smelt. She's breathing away. Oh, now she's breathing, uh, oh, breathing this side as well. That's interesting. So just balancing up a little bit. Bit of bilateral. And the red hats of Molly Baker finishing very quickly. These two, oh, head to head they are. Look at this with about 10 metres to go. Molly Baker in the red hat, Jessica Smelt in the black hat. Who's going to get the touch? It's mighty tight. The winner of the uh, junior final is Molly Baker by six one hundredths of a second. Wow, that was close. Molly Baker wins it. And a new lifetime best from her by 1.6 seconds. A 420.1 wins it. Second is uh, Jessica Smelt, 420.1 second. 
seven, a huge lifetime best for her to get second place in this junior final. And third, Kate Cotter of Chelmsford City. Yeah, great PBs there from all top three girls. Molly Baker in first for 20.1, just outside of that European junior qualifying time, but still a PB. Great race, fantastic race. Was it 7100 split them, something like that? Now the B final of the women's 400 meters freestyle. Amir Slevin is the fastest seed from Loughborough University. And what a training group they've got at Loughborough University on that uh, distance program, uh, both the men and the women. It's phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. And you've got the likes of um, Dan Whiffen over there as well, Felix, um, Toby Robinson. So, yeah, they have a lot of great depth, ranging all the way from kind of 200 freestyle to 10K open water. So, um, yeah, they're doing a great job under Andy Manley. And I think it's Ian Hume that heads up the sprint squad over there. And they certainly do have a very, very good programme. It's uh, full of internationals. The other programmes at Loughborough, the National Centre, all uh, British, but um, they've got quite a few Masters um, swimmers there doing the Masters degree. Great idea, I love it. B final, 400 freestyle. Mia Slevin of Loughborough in lane four is the fastest seed. The full line out there, Varley of uh, Plymouth in one, Monks of Swansea two. Phoebe Cooper, the junior, the 16-year-old, second in the B final of the 200 metres freestyle and three. She swam really well there. In four, it's Mia Slevin. Five, uh, Shannon Stott of Sheffield. Six is Ella Dyson of Wickham. Seven, Holly Wilson of Leeds, the 15-year-old junior. And eight is Myrie Craig of the University of Edinburgh. Yeah, fairly solid start for all girls here. Seems pretty, pretty evenly spread across the field. The turn in first is Shannon Scott in a 29-4. Just getting into the pace of this race now. And Leeds swimming the uh, yellow hats. Uh, uh, she's just gone out of the shot at the bottom there, but nice long rangey strokes in the centre. A little bit of cat and mouse early on. Don't want to go too hard, but at the same time, don't want to get left behind. You certainly can't uh, win the race in the first 100, but you can definitely lose it by going far too quickly. Absolutely, but I think these girls almost have to put themselves out there for the first 100 as well, you know. I think the worst thing is getting out of a race and regretting not going early enough. So it's about pacing it well, getting that easy speed like we spoke a lot this week, um, especially down the first 200. And then I think from there, the girls can start building, adding a bit more leg kick and picking up the pace. Well, at the moment, it's five and three. That's uh, Shannon Stott of Sheffield and Phoebe Cooper, the youngster from Sheffield in lane number three. She's uh, Phoebe Cooper in lane three is doing a 200 of all the strokes at this uh, at this championships, this Aquatics GB Swimming Championships, 200 in, 200 fly, 200 back, 200 breast and 200 freestyle. All to practice for that medal. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, very impressive. And I think we've seen that quite a lot over, over this week. You know, there's a lot of names we're seeing coming back time and time again in different events. And I think it's really important as a junior swimmer to kind of keep your broad spectrum across all the strokes. And then as they get older, that's when they can start specialising into that singular stroke. Well, this is the uh, halfway mark, and this is the B final of the women's 400 metres freestyle. And Wilson now, uh, Holly Wilson, the youngster, the lead swimmer in lane seven, and that uh, yellow hat right at the bottom. Well, she's paced it very well. She was really comfortable. That easy speed you were talking about, Molly, on the first 100, 150, started picking it up a little bit, and she looks good. Quite a, quite a short entry on her right arm, entered right by her head, but she really stretches out when she puts her, her arm into the water. She does, yeah. She's breathing every two, keeping an eye on the rest of the field. Coming into this turn, I think she's going to turn first. Yep, splitting a 32-4 there as well. So, really solid split. So, 32-4 is uh, not actually the fastest split. It's a 32-1 from Phoebe Cooper up there in the red hat. So, uh, the other's starting to come back a little bit. I wonder if she's gone a little bit early. It's a, it's a gutsy swim, this. I like the way she's doing it. I like it very much indeed. The attack, well... Surely now she's starting to swim away a little bit, is she? She is, yeah. She's leaving the city of Sheffield girls behind a little bit. So interesting to see how she's going to hold up down this last hundred. But she's looking great. Maybe not maximising her underwater soft returns, but not often seen in distance freestyle. Well, she was nearly a second faster than the uh, other ladies 
on that last 50. She really did put a big one in going into that 300 metres turn. So 75 metres left to go in this, the B final of the women's 400 metres freestyle. Coming back a little bit right at the top there in that red hat is Phoebe Cooper, but uh, no doubt about the leader, Holly Wilson, as she can keep this going. The 15-year-old is going to uh, win the B final, the youngest in the field, and she looks great, Molly. She does look great. You can see her really picking up the leg kick now down this length. I think that's the first time we've seen her kind of breaking the water with her leg. So definitely picking up the pace and hopefully she can hold on into the wall. Well, another junior uh, who's going to be looking to try and make the team for the uh, European Junior Championships in Vilnius. So far, there have been uh, 51 swims underneath the consideration time. That's amazing. But Holly Wilson of City of Leeds wins the B final of the women's 400 metres freestyle. 4.14.2. Wow, what a lifetime best was 4.16. And the consideration time for European juniors, 4.17. She's just gone 4.14. So she's three seconds underneath that European junior consideration time. Wow. Some great swimming. You know, I'm, I'm really enjoying this meet. There's been so many fabulous swims, the whole environment, everything. The only thing that disappoints me, Molly, is that they don't smile when they do a lifetime best. <laughs> None of them. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, confirmation of the result of the B final, the women's 400 free. Holly Wilson wins at City of Leeds. A great swim from her. Phoebe Cooper second, Shannon Stott third, and Mia Slevin in fourth. Wow. Well, well, coming up next is, of course, the women's 400 meter freestyle para Paris final. Uh, this is an absolutely stacked field. We've got Alice Ty, we have Eliza Humphrey, we have Brock Whiston. They all hit that nomination time in the heats this morning. They're going to be looking at doing it again. But of course, we also have the incredible Maisie Summers Newton. It's the first time we're seeing her race. I caught up with this morning. So let's take a look and see what she had to say. So I'm down here on pool deck with uh, the wonderful Maisie, Maisie Summers Newton. First one done, day four. It's a long wait to get to day four to dive in. Yeah, definitely, you know, I've been sat at home watching it all, watching my teammates from Northampton and definitely just wanted to get here. So when I arrived tomorrow, I was, yesterday, I was like, yeah, this is good. I feel OK, I'm here now. I can go and swim. So, yeah, getting that one under my belt. Season's best there and just a little bit off the qualifying time. So hopefully tonight I can try and push that a little bit. But the 400 isn't really one of my main, main ones compared to the breaststroke and the IM. So I'll give it everything tonight again, yeah. I know Paralympic gold medalist in that 2IM, looking to do a repeat this summer, which would be amazing. Are you feeling good heading into tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I raced three weeks ago and I did season's best there. So definitely feeling good. Just after that race as well, I think I was in good shape. So, yeah, try and keep the nerves down a little bit because I always get super nervous for the IM. But, um, yeah, it should be good. I can't wait to see what you do. Look, good luck tonight. We'll see you later on. Well, there's Maisie on the left of the screen, our Northampton teammates, the two Humphreys twins coming out, Scarlett Humphrey, British record holder in the S11 class, visually impaired swimmer, she'll be swimming with the black tote goggles, she'll have the tapper at the end of the lanes, and there is her sister, Eliza Humphrey, what a swim she had in the qualification heat. It's a nomination time for Eliza Humphrey, finishing just ahead of her sister, 4.31.04. Fantastic result for the Humphreys twins. There's Maisie. Well, world championship medalist last year, world champion back in 2022 in this one. Can she just dip under that nomination time for the first time this week? Welsh Commonwealth Games swimmer Megan Willis, the young 16-year-old, youngest in this field. And there's Alice Ty. Looks so comfortable this morning in the heat. Uh, we've spoken a lot to Alice Ty this week. Can she get fast tonight? Brock Whiston. It was a nomination time for Brock Whiston. Loves this pool. Swimmer from London, disability. And there is Tony Shaw. Just outside the nomination time in qualification. Like Maisie, she was a world champion in this event back in 2022 and her University of Aberdeen performance teammate Faye Rogers goes in lane number four, the fastest into this final. Not the highest point, Serna, though. Remember, the times for the swimmers compared against the world best time for their classification over the last two years it generates a points total. So if you hit that world best time, you earn yourself a 1,000 points. 
was Tony Shaw that had the highest number of points, 8.50. Brock Wiston, no nomination time. She was absolutely delighted to get under that time. Maisie. Well, she'll be chasing the nomination time for the first time this week. And also the British record held by Jamie Ellie Yorma. Simmons. She just comes up to the turn, and the two Humphrey sisters. And Scarlett Humphrey has the edge over Eliza as they go over at the 100 mark. So Faye Rogers in lane number four. Well, Faye Rogers was at the Olympic trials as an able bodied swimmer back in 2021. She's going to university in Aberdeen. And a car accident and severe damage to her arm, which has left her with a permanent impairment. Hey Rogers now competing in the para events. And she had great success last year, winning the gold in the 100 butterfly at the World Championships last year, and also a bronze medal in this event, the 400 freestyle. She'd love to get that qualification standard under her belt. Nomination time for her is 4.42.25, so keep an eye on those times as they come up to the halfway point. The just goes over at 2.19, so just a little on schedule for that, to be sure, 2.22 for her. There's one classification down from Faye Rogers, she in the S9 classification, she has an arm impairment, Tony Shaw, one of the toughest swimmers out there in the power program her time nomination time just under the 450 mark so 449.98 is the time that tony shaw is looking for it's getting a little bit stretched out at the front there the s10 leading the s9 and brock whistle going along very nicely ahead of alice ty that's the battle of the two s8s just check the progress of Maisie Summers Newton. These uh, leading swimmers come back. It's the uh, she's alongside her Northampton teammate Scarlett Humphrey. They're going along very nicely indeed. Scarlett Humphrey, in particular, having a very good swim here. British record holder in the S11 class. You see the tappers there. Scarlett Humphrey doing a very good job. She had the, a little bit of a, an issue with the lean ropes this morning. She's zigzagging a little bit down the lanes, but she looks pretty straight in this final. As Faye Rogers heads into the last 100. Tony Shaw, 3.37 for Tony Shaw. Well, it's going to be tough for Tony Shaw now, but she is capable of it. 37 for that previous 50. So she's got to pick up the pace, Tony Shaw. And Faye Rogers, well, she's doing well. The two University of Aberdeen performance swimmers. Faye Rogers will turn in this final 50. Six for that previous 50, so she is somewhere uh, maybe just outside that 442. She has to do something pretty spectacular in this final 50. Faye Rogers heading for home. Tony Shaw around about six seconds or so behind her University of Aberdeen teammate. And let's see if Faye Rogers can just dip under that standard four. 
42.25. It's going to be very close as she comes into the last five, maybe just outside for Faye Rogers. It's just slipped by, it's 4.44.20. What can Tony Shaw do? Can she be under the 450 mark? And she is under the 450 mark. And she has sneaked in by two one hundredths of a second. What a finish from Tony Shaw. And she'll be delighted with that one. That was a major event for Tony Shaw. And that will be a huge relief as Brock Quiston also dips under her nomination standard. Alice Toy also under the standard. Megan Willis finishes and now turn her attention to Maisie Summers Newton and the Humphrey sisters. Maisie now coming through just over the 520 mark. And I think Maisie's going to be around about what she was this morning. And Scarlett Humphrey, well, look at that time from Scarlett Humphrey 526.42. And that will be a new British record for Scarlett Humphrey if that result is confirmed, of course and also a nomination time for her. The two Humphrey sisters achieving nomination times. Eliza Humphrey did hers this morning and Scarlett Humphrey did hers this evening. In terms of the points, Brock Quiston, I think, might just edge it. 870 points. And Tony Shaw, well, that is a phenomenal swim for both Brock Quiston and Tony Shaw. Absolutely superb. Tony Shaw, this was a big event for her. 449.98 was the qualification standard and nomination time, and she's gone 449.96. Two one hundredths of a second. That was absolutely phenomenal from Tony Shaw. Close contest for the medals. <laughs> the British champion, I think, will be brought with if this result is confirmed. S11 goggles have to be checked. And there was a star, swimmers in the higher numerical classes. Well, they swim away from the others in the outside lanes. What a close contest it was in terms of points. Faye Rogers just missing out on her nomination time, but she won't be too disappointed about that with 100 butterfly to come, her main event. And what about that swim from Scarlett Humphrey? My goodness. British record if the result is confirmed, of course. The S11 swimmers, phenomenal to watch the S11 swimmers, the, the blacked out goggles, and there is the result. Brock Quiston confirmed as the British champion. What a contest that was, Tony Shaw, just behind two points, but she won't mind about that at all because she has achieved that nomination time. That is huge for Tony Shaw. Brock Quiston achieved the time this morning, she's gone better tonight. Alice Ty also another time for her, and Scarlett Humphrey, that British record time for the S11 class. The two Humphrey sisters have made the times with Eliza swimming her time this morning. 400 freestyle, what a strong event. Strong event for GB power swimming, fantastic. Five swimmers making the nomination time. Seven. The medalists making their way to the centre again for the medal presentation. And Maisie Summers Newton, a phenomenal points total for her, 818 points. She's uh, missed out on the nomination time, but she will be back tomorrow for a big event, the 200 midges individual medley. Great swims, and it's going to be a very happy podium, I think. And they are now with John Mason. Well, I tell you what, a busy, busy race that was. We had a multiple people hit that nomination time. Can I get a round of applause, first of all, for our British medalists? Brock Wiston, Tony Shaw, and Maisie Summers Newton. But I also have to let you know that Alice Ty and Scarlett Humphreys hit that nomination time as well, put themselves in a good position in front of those selectors for the Paralympic Games. But Brock, I'm going to come down here to you. I mean, the 400, it's no short race, but you're British champion and you got that nomination time. Um, 400 free is a new event to the program for us. I mean, in 2019, when I swam here, it wasn't even an event that I thought about. Um, we did it in Manchester and 2023 and a PB'd, so yeah, I mean, to share a podium with Maisie and Tony, I mean, 
I think we know that that's a strong field if you're sharing the podium with Maisie and Tony. So yeah, I'm a bit shocked, but yeah, thanks. Well, you did it and you're British champion. So congratulations, Brock. Now, Tony, you just got out of that pool. I said, how was that? You said it was hard. And like Brock said, you know, it's a long event. It's a new addition uh, to, to the program here for you guys, but you did the time. So putting yourself in good stead for the Paralympics over the summer. Yeah, I mean, I did it by 0 0.02, I think. So <laughs> over 400, that's pretty close, but I'm just so happy. Yeah, well, I tell you what, 0 0.02 is still the time, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and a silver medal. So congratulations to you. I'm going to come around here. Maisie, I know we caught up earlier this morning and you said, you know, you've been itching to race, you've been watching your teammates all week. Getting in there feeling pretty good, setting yourself up for your 2 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. You know, the 400 is always one of my events that I do. I do it like out of the three that I usually do. But it would have been nice to get the time tonight just to kind of get it out of the way. But like me and my coach have been saying, you know, we've been working on the IM and the breaststroke. So hopefully get those tomorrow. So yeah, it should be good. Keep those notes down. You got it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Look, congratulations. We love to see it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're British medalists. Oh yeah, Maisie will be back tomorrow. Two massive events for Maisie. And she's not too far away from her lifetime best on this 400, so that looks good for the 200 IM. Really pleased for Tony Shaw to dip under that qualification standard. That was huge for her, and Brock Wilson just gets better and better. Andy Roberts from Paddix GB making those presentations, and there are your medalists for the 400 freestyle para Paris final. And now, as we move on to the Paris final, John Mason caught up with Leah Crisp and Amelie Boxage after the heats this morning. I'm coming to you first because you've already qualified for Paris in the open water, so coming into an event like this obviously takes a bit of the pressure off. Yeah, definitely. Like just really here to have a bit of fun and they'll get really get stuck in racing and um, it's just really nice to have that pressure off and kind of just be there to support your team and just get to watch and like yeah I've really enjoyed it and uh, sort of you know open water it's it's a very different sport than this so goals out there are what you want to do in Paris and goals in the pool very different yeah completely different it means I'm not really kind of fully rested for this as I would normally which is why I wasn't here for the 15 it's kind of come in for the weekend, but it's still important to keep in touch with that, you know, high-end speed and pool speed. So just here to really get stuck in and enjoy the racing. Yeah, well, I hope you enjoy it, and I think you're going to be great tonight. And Emily, obviously our British champion from the other night. I know you don't like swim in the morning heats, but that looks pretty comfortable. Yeah, it was. I never really swim good in the morning heats. I'm always pretty, like, half asleep. And obviously the final really brings you out, doesn't it? So hopefully we can both push each other in the final. Yeah, and I know you've got your whole family down here as well cheering you on. It's got to be a bit of a vibe. Yeah, it is, and even the crowd as well it's really loud yeah it's a really good crowd well for a 14 year old she's a great chatter isn't she gracious mate very impressive indeed what a lovely lady well she is in lane five and those two fastest and second fastest seed for this the paris final of the women's 400 meters freestyle there's fleur lewis great open water swimmer she is uh, up there in lane one from loughborough university We've got some really good women on the open water again. Yeah, it's nice to see them coming back, you know. I think a few years ago we were really strong with Kerry Ann Payne and Cassie Patton, and then I think the men have kind of taken over since then, so it's good to see the girls coming back there. Certainly is. Well, that was Michaela Glenister. Here's Holly Hibbert. Holly, fantastic uh, junior. She really was. She's now at uh, Bath Performance Centre. And uh, let's see what she can do in this final of the women's 400 metres freestyle. Lucy Fox in lane number three for Wickham and District. And then the two we've just seen the interviews with, the 14-year-old Emily Bloxage of City of Salford. Well, she's double British champion on the 1500 metres freestyle, but she doesn't hold the age group record for the 14-year-olds in this 400 metres freestyle. Yeah, it's her last chance to break that. Um, I think she turns 15 next week, so the age group record she'll be aiming for is just slightly faster than her PB at 4.12.51. And it was set an awful long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, so that was set in 2008 by Anne Bockman, so that was before um, Emily was even born, so a very long time ago. 16 years ago, Anne Bockman. I wonder if she's still Anne Bockman, if you're out there, Anne. 
Your record at the moment is still standing. I wouldn't bet against it going here, though. Bloxage is in five, in four, Leah Crisp. Well, Leah Crisp, goodness me, open water. She is on the train to Paris. She's on the British team. She's doing the 10,000 metre open water. Crisp in four. Five is Bloxage. Hibbert in six. Barnes in seven for Mount Kelly. She's swimming well. Take your marks. Eight lengths of the pool, the final of the women's 400 metres freestyle. And the open water specialist who said she's here just for a bit of fun. The pressure's off. She's already on the British ship. Team. She goes in lane number four with her blocks in shirt right next to her. Yeah, and strong, really strong start from lane six, just Holly Hibbert. She, she has the fastest PB of the field in 4.05.01. So I think we can expect to see her take it out strong and see how close she can get to that qualifying time. Well, gone off uh, very quickly down in seven is Megan Barnes. And she won the B final of the 200 metres freestyle by, uh, well, set a lifetime best by a second and a half to qualify for this 400 free final. She's in lane seven in the white hat, just about leading, but they're all around. A Holly Hibbert one lane up from her in the black hat. Closer to us is uh, Jemima Hall of University of Bath in lane eight. And it's almost the race of two halves here. It's uh, almost the guys at the bottom of the pool here just pushing each other on. And the guys at the top there could be a little bit careful here. Yeah, the closest three lanes was looking really strong here, turning one, two, and three. Really good start from lane seven, Megan Barnes. She turned first in just over one minute, I think, the time's just gone. But great start from these outside ladies. I'd like to see Emily um, pick it up in the back half of the race. We know she's going to have a really strong back half from that 1500 earlier this week. So emily has got that uh, yellow hat in lane five in the centre. And it's a little bit bizarre, this, because normally, well, the fastest seeds are in the middle, and normally you'd see the fastest seeds leading. It's almost an inverse arrowhead here spearhead isn't it at the moment but expect leah crisp the 10,000 meter specialist in four to come back really hard on the second half and then of course emily Bloxage, double british senior champion on the 1500 meters freestyle in the yellow hat she will come back quickly i just wonder how quickly she can come back but look at this this is a little bit of a surprise it's very exciting though for holly hibbert she's gone out really quickly this is a gutsy swim, it's a great swim, big breath off that wall. <laughs> yeah, great start from Holly Hibbert, you know, she is the most experienced swimmer in this field. She's been to a couple of Commonwealth Games, picked up a few medals there too, so she's no stranger to performing on the international stage. And looking at her PB, she, she should be out there on her own, I think. So if she's going to get a crack at this qualifying time, this is exactly what she needs to do. Well, she's been in World Championship Finals, I think, also in 400 freestyle. She's very good indeed, but uh, hasn't had the greatest couple of first seasons. But this is very impressive. And what's the lead now? About five metres, five and a half. Second now is uh, Emily Bloxage in that yellow hat. She's starting to really drive. And she's set the uh, fastest split of the rest of the field on that last 50 metres. But still, Holly Hibbert looks very good in this black hat. And I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if she's swimming away here. This is very impressive indeed. Yeah, she looks great. Both Emily and Holly split in a 31 there. So it'd be interesting to see what they split here, if they can hold on down the last last two lengths. Just slowing down slightly, Holly there on a 32-3. But Emily definitely coming back strong, still still in a 31. So 0.4 of a second faster was the yellow hat in second place then on that last 50 metres. That was uh, Emily Bloxage. But uh, can she catch up Holly here? But has Holly gone off too fast here this is very very interesting i do know that Bloxage will fly home she's still going to try and break that to a national age group record of 412.5 i don't think they're going to do the olympic consideration time that's very very quick indeed but this is a fantastic swim from hibbert yeah great swim from hibbert and namely's coming back even stronger again spit another 31.6 there i think this age group record could be under threat well, this is just fascinating. Look, she's looking at her. She's got that little spidery stroke, but Hibbert is holding on. This is tough from Hibbert. She's reeling her in, though. If she left it a little bit too late, this is a great swim from Holly Hibbert. I think Hibbert's going to win this from the start. What a great swim this is. Holly Hibbert 
national champion women's 400 metres freestyle 4 11 6. Well, that's her best time for an awful, awful long time. A massive season's best from her. A great swim, and uh, Molly Rainshaw did Emily Broxage break that junior record? She did. She's broke it by just under half a second. So, great swim from her. I think she took nearly a second off her PB there, and also dipping under the European junior qualifying time. Look at the smile on the face of Holly Hibbert. Well done, Holly. She's had a tough couple of years and she's come back and that's great. <laughs> look, at, <laughs> look at the face there. She's just realised she's broken. Emily Blox had just broken that 16-year-old national age group record that was set before she was born. Oh, look at that. What a great, what a great reaction. Fantastic. That's really exciting as well for Emily's 800 later this week, you know. Her 1500 was so strong, but she's proven that she's got that early speed as well. So finding that distance in the middle might be the sweet spot for her. You can see Holly on your screen there, really pulling away part of the racing, but great finish from her. She is 10 years older than Amelie, so I can imagine it's quite daunting down that last 50, being chased down by a 14-year-old. Well, she, she was just going and going, my goodness me. I'll tell you what, three more strikes, look at that. The relief, I'm so pleased for Holly Hibbert. That's a great swim, it really is. Fantastic. So here's the results of that uh, 400 metres freestyle. Holly Hibbert wins it, 4.11.6. A new national age group record in the 14s for Bloxage in second. Let's hear they, what they've got to say to John. That was such a fun race to watch. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Holly Hibbert, your British champion. I loved it. I loved it. Holly... It's good to have you back here, by the way. Uh, well swam. You went out hard from the start and holding Amelie off down that final 50. Yeah, um, I knew I had to kind of play to some of my strengths, which is my speed. Yeah. And I knew Amelie would be coming back at the end. Um, I saw her down the last 50 and I just gave it everything I can. So, yeah, I'm pleased to get the win. Uh, you know, and I said that was really fun to watch. I don't know if it was that fun to race. It's always good to be in a race like that, I'm guessing. Yeah, it is. Um, Amelie's doing amazing things for distance swimming in Britain. So, yeah, it's great to see. Look, congratulations, British champion. We love to see it. Holly Hibbert, ladies and gentlemen. And Amelie, you just got out of the pool and said to me, oh, my legs have never hurt so much, you know. You got an age group record. That record was set before you were born. Um, so, congratulations. Did you enjoy a 400? Yeah, I did. It's something that I not usually do a lot. So it was a really close race as well. So well done to Holly. Yeah. And you know, you, you would did that final 10 meters as well, just spinning it a bit, but you, you were chasing it down. Could you see her coming down that final 50? Yeah, definitely. I was chasing it down. Well, look, we loved watching you do it. Congratulations. Silver medal for Emily Blockstage. And Fleur, welcome back. Another medal to add to your table this week. Uh, you know, a shorter distance, it's, it's much more of a push on that front end speed. But talk me through your race. Um, I think I just, um, I spoke with my coach Andy before and we just kind of went like, just kind of go for it. The 15 wasn't really what I was hoping for, so I just tried to pick myself up after that and just really go for it in this one. And, it's just going to be more confident for the eight on Sunday. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys do. I think it's going to be a fun race on Sunday. Look, congratulations, a bronze medal. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your British medalists. Yeah, three very happy ladies there for lots of different reasons. It's fantastic to see. Fleur Lewis from lane one. 14.1, one and a half second lifetime best from her, getting the bronze, the silver. Adding to the gold that she won on the uh, 1500 metres freestyle. Abby Roberts here, um, event manager at Speedo and Aquatics GB Swimming, presenting the awards to the girls. And the gold, of course, going to Polly Hibbert in lane six. Brilliant. Well, back to the studio now.
two guys taking part in these Paris para final in the 50 meters breaststroke classifications S1 to S10. Of course, those with physical impairments. These two are in the SB3 category, so they have some of the more severe impairments in the Paralympic program. And the man who's he's enjoying himself, Harvey Phillips, the young man just 19 years of age, and there's the British record holder. Oh, it looks like he means business, doesn't he? Lyndon Longhorn, Paralympian from Tokyo. I, I've said before, but I do remember him swimming here in 2012 in the trials. He missed out on selection 2012. Wasn't really around for Rio in 2016, but came back and made his place in. Tokyo and Harvey Phillips. Well, man who has been kind of following Lyndon Longhorn over the years. It's been a real role model for Harvey Phillips, Lyndon Longhorn. And you can just see the, the towel on the blocks there for these two swimmers. Some of the power swimmers are allowed. Adaptations at the start have to be, of course, agreed by the referee. So if they are amputees, for example, they are allowed to put a towel on the blocks just to prevent abrasions on the stumps. Very similar impairments, these two. Great head-to-heads that they have had. Lyndon Longhorn's got the, the better of Harvey Phillips. Not the sprinter in this 50 breaststroke, but Harvey Phillips is coming back here. Wow, Harvey Phillips in the black hat, coming alongside Lyndon Longhorn now. What a race between these two great pals. Lyndon Longhorn, he's holding on, but here comes the young man, Harvey Phillips, into the last few strokes here. Lyndon Longhorn, Harvey Phillips, it's going to be all on the touch. Phillips now, maybe just edging it. It's all going to be on the reach here, and it is. Harvey Phillips, what a victory for Harvey Phillips and that is one of the first times that he has got the better of Lyndon Longhorn in the head-to-head -head. wow, what a great swim there from Harvey Phillips, just 19 hundredths of a second separating the two of them, but what a great race and Harvey Phillips will be absolutely delighted with that 441 points for Harvey Phillips and 437 for Lyndon Longhorn. Whoa, that was absolutely incredible. Lyndon Longhorn got the better start. British record holder at 57.94. But look at this finish. Harvey Phillips timed it to absolute perfection. And what a race here. The crowd really getting behind these two. And, well, I think we both have enjoyed that. That was a great atmosphere for that Para Paris final. And the result is confirmed. 101.06 for Harvey Phillips, just outside his lifetime best. But Lyndon Longhorn came. It was almost like that 400 with Emily Bluffsage coming from behind. It was Harvey Phillips coming from behind this time. And bearing down on the British record holder. Well, it's great to see these swimmers in the lower numerical classifications, the higher level of impairments, just shows what can be done. So anyone out there watching these guys, just get in the pool. Cottage TV need you. And then the medalists making their way to the podium. And they will have a chat with John Mason. Well, Harvey and Lyndon, you had us all on the edge of our seats. Point two in that, but Harvey, you're British champion. The youngster coming for the British record holder, and you did it! Finally, Adam, and I. <laughs> it's took long enough, but...
Yeah. I mean, you guys are such good friends. You train, have been training together, been racing together for, for a while now. You know, he got you in that uh, 150 IM. You're now in the 50 breast. Is this going to be a battle all week? Um, hopefully. Got, well, 200, 200 free together, so that should be exciting. He should be out. <laughs> hopefully he's puffing a bit f after the 50 back. But. Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. Look, congratulations, mate. Well done. British champion Harvey Phillips. <laughs> Lyndon. <laughs> You know, the veteran, the British record holder, you said to me you let him have that. Yeah. Did you let him have it? Yeah, I don't know what he's on about. <laughs> <laughs> we love to see it. You guys have such a good time racing. We love watching you do it. Congratulations, the silver medal. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your British medalists. <laughs> Luke Winder's getting a bit of a hard time there. <laughs> Harvey Phillips said he's a bit puffed out. John Mason calling him a veteran. <laughs> and Liz Johnson. <laughs> Paralympic gold medalist in the breaststroke. My uh, sometime commentary partner, Liz Johnson, making these presentations. Great to see you, Liz, here back in London. Harvey and Linda, the medalist, as I said, great pals. Well, the next race up is the women's. 200 meters backstroke the junior final and some real youngsters in this one three 14 year olds in this final so right in the center with the fastest two grace mcdonald and uh, darcy smith both 14. The closest to us is clementine lovell she's had a great meet so far from team ipswich and, uh, She's also 14 years of age, right at the bottom of the screen. But uh, so here we go. So the full lineup: Grease of Repton in one, Govins of Nova Centurion in two, three is Jones of Leicester Sharks, four Grace McDonald of Grantham, five Starcy Smith of Portsmouth, Repton Swimmer Marshall in six, Monday of Kingston in seven, and Level of Ipswich in eight. 200 metres backstroke, the junior final. And they have a chance of making the European junior consideration time here, Molly. It's, they've got to do a big lifetime best to do it, though. Yeah, a few of them have got to drop around two seconds to get that 216.95. But need to be aware, we do still have two juniors in the next final, in the B final. And then in the Paris final, we also have 15-year-old Martina from Chelsea and Westminster. So the fastest two are the two youngsters, two of the three youngsters, I should say. Grace McDonald of Grantham in four, the fastest seed, and Darcy Smith of Portsmouth. Those two right in the centre, well, in lane four, a really lovely start. Fabulous stroke right in the centre, that black hat of uh, Grace McDonald. Lovely, long, rangy, powerful stroke. It's pretty impressive. Really good start there as well from lane eight, Clementine from Team Itch, but swimming, really making the most of that 15 metres under the water. So the, uh, that's the first 50 over. It's uh, four lengths of the pool. It's 200 metres backstroke, the junior final. And she started very well. Also going well up in two is Rose Gubbins of Nova Centurion. And these two, well, they're going pretty hard. We've talked a lot about easy speed and very important to that, particularly on backstroke. It's uh, a lot of 200 backstrokers, I think, try and save their legs a little bit on the, uh, on the first 100. No, because um, if you get tired legs on the second hand when they drop, oh, that's hard. Yeah, in backstroke, it's all about keeping that body position as close to the surface, the surface of the water as you can. Just because, as you said, then legs get tired, they start to feel heavy and they start to drop, and that just decreases the, the streamline in the stroke, which can slow you down. Good turn right at the top there from uh, Annabelle Crees of Repton. Annabelle starting to come through and uh, starting to challenge Grace McDonald in four. So, McDonald in four, and six, it's uh, Holly Marshall of Repton. It's slightly deceptive, that angle, I have to say. There we go. So, uh, in four, it is Grace McDonald of Grantham. She's going to turn. Is she going to turn first? Right at the top there, Crease maybe first. Crease it is, by seven one-hundredths of a second for McDonald in four, Marshall in six. So, Wayne's one, four, and six with 50 to go. Annabelle Cree's looking great there as well. She just split a 35-0, so looking like a really strong back end for her. Oh, Cree's at the top. She's going very well. She has the fastest lifetime best in the field of 
And uh, well, this is a really impressive swim. Her season's best is 2.18, so it looks like she's going to go underneath that, I think. It's going to be a little bit tight. Let's see, 2.17 she's gone. Yes, she has. 2.17.7 wins it. Annabelle Kreese from lane one. Second was Grace McDonald. Third was B. Jones in three. She came back very well indeed, but paced it very interestingly. She was quite comfortable to the 100 and then just started picking up the pace. Yeah, and I think we saw a few girls there dipping under 35 seconds, so splitting a 34 on the back 50, which was really impressive. So maybe they can step away from this and readjust the, um, the timings of the race. But great there from the outside lane, Annabelle Cruz finishing in a 2.17.71. Well, that's the junior final down. The B final now, swimmers ranked 9 through 16 after the heats this morning. With the A final, of course, the top eight, the Paris final, the big final coming up. And the swimmers, you can only qualify for the Olympic team if you swim in the final and do the consideration time, that nomination time. So this, the B final of the women's 200 metres backstroke. Here we go. So, uh, fastest seed is Caitlin Ebbage of University of Stirling. Two Stirling swimmers in this uh, final. In four, it's Ebbage. In six, it's Nellie Kinch. Between them, Olivia Butler of Edinburgh University. And uh, that is the fastest seed in lane number four, the black hat. That is uh, Caitlin Ebbage. Right at the top, Blythe Kinsman's had a very good meet so far fourth on the 100 backstroke and that time well if she'd done it at the European Juniors last year she'd have won it she's going back to the European Juniors this time that's exciting she's right at the top Kinsman in four Ebbage of Sterling in Kinsman in one so Blythe Kinsman and one of Kelly Wallet of Midlothian in two three is Mears of Bromley Ebbage in four five is Butler six is uh, Kinch of Sterling seven Rig of Cockermouth and eight is Millie Wells of Leicester Sharks. Great start there from the middle lanes, really maximising that underwater. We do have Alexandra Waller in lane two who has the fastest PB of the field in 2.12.29. So this morning was the season's best for her in a 2.17. So I'm sure she'll be looking to drop under that again tonight. Well, she's, uh, she started off well, Waller, up there in two, but uh, I think by far the fastest start is Caitlin Ebbage of the University of Stirling. Stirling had having, having a really good meet here. What I found fascinating with this meet is it's mainly been the men from an awful long time from well, all across Great Britain and, and particularly Scotland. But I think Scotland have had a bit of focus in trying to get their women through generally in Scotland and it's working incredibly well. Yeah, definitely. We've definitely seen a big, big improvement in that area. And I think with the likes of um, Cara Hanlon and Angrid Evans on the breaststroke, you know, they're so competitive now on the 50 and the 100 breaststroke. And it's just proven across all the women that they are really putting a mark down and proven that they're coming back in the sport. Well, they certainly are. When you add those names to Kiana McInnes and Kathleen Dawson and Lucy Hope, Katie Shanahan, Oh, it's quite a squad there now, it really is really impressive, and many of those from uh, from Sterling. Yeah, Sterling have a great programme up there, um, Stephen Tigg leading, leading that programme. Um, also the two University of Sterling swimmers here, so real depth in that, and we, have, we do have Kathleen coming up in the next heat as well, so real depth in this backstroke event, and a great programme that they're running up there. Well, going very well at the moment to with about uh, 35 metres to go in this B final of the women's 200 metres backstroke. Caitlin Ebbage of Stirling in four, just about leading from Olivia Butler of Edinburgh. And also going well is Alexander Waller of Midlothian. So the three Scots in two, four and five going very well indeed. Who's going to get the touch? I've got to say, I don't know. It may well be uh, Ebbage in four, is it? Diving for the wall, Ebbage just gets it from Waller by five one hundredths of a second. Wow, that was close. Great PB there from Caitlin as well. She's just dipped under, and I think, oh no, she's outside of the, the European junior age group, but still a good PB for her, just over a second off of that. Yeah, it was a good swim. She's just looking down the other end uh, at the scoreboard to see how she has done and how the rest of the field has done. It's about 75 metres away. It's a long way away. But the B file of the women's 200 backstroke, Caitlin Edwidge of Sterling wins it to 15 2. Wallace second, Butler third, Kinsman fourth. Well, Blythe, Blythe Kinsman there, 2 2.16. 2 
She uh, she swam really well, 216 on the back of that 100. So I believe we'll be. Uh, I think we've got an interview with Katie coming up, have we? I think we do. Yeah, I'm down here on pool deck with uh, Katie Shanahan. Now, Katie, obviously doing just what you need to do to get tonight's final. I saw you really switched off in that sort of final 25. Yeah, I wasn't really putting too much um, effort into that. I, co I spoke to my, my, with my coach, Steve, before, and he said to not um, put too much into it, just to, you know, save myself a bit for tonight and put a big performance in tonight. Yeah. And, the, you know, there's a very smart strategy, of course, heading in, because we're looking at getting times. I was watching your underwaters as well. They are looking good. You've been working on them? Yeah, I have been, yeah. We've been doing quite a lot of underwater stuff all year at Sterling, and, you know, I think that's quite a big part of my backstroke. I feel like I can um, really pull away... Um, um, on those underwater, so hopefully I can use them again tonight. Look, I can't wait to see what you do. Good luck. It's going to be amazing, I'm sure. Well, Katie Shanahan is, uh, is having a fabulous meet. She is in lane three. And she is the class of this field, but uh, saying she's the class of the field, she's on 200 backstroke, the fastest on paper. But you stick the rest of them in here as well. There's some fantastic swimmers, including in lane six, our Olympic champion, from that mixed medley relay, Kathleen Dawson. She's already on the train to Paris. She won the 100 in underneath the consideration time. So a gold medal and under consideration time, she's in. Honey Osrin swimming really well here in four. She could do the consideration time. Shanahan in three, she can do it. And Holly McGill's having a really good meet in five. Yeah, this race is, is wide open, to be honest. There's three of them with PVs underneath the qualifying time. And like you said, Holly McGill having a great meet. Her PV sits at 2.10, so a few few seconds shy of that um, qualifying time. But I wouldn't discount the four girls in the middle. They're all looking great this week. Well, I guess the big question is where's the, where are the medal's going to go. There is Katie Shanahan, and she looked very comfortable. She did say, coach told me to go steady during that heat. So... A steady 2.12 is pretty frightening, I think. It's not easy to swim slow. We've already talked about that. You train race pace all the time, and then you come to a championship and you go slow. You don't really practice that that much, do you? No, and it's a difficult one, because when, when I swam, Dave used to always plug to us that every race is an opportunity to kind of work on things and try and, get, try and make everything perfect for that summer meet. So... It's, it's strange to see some of the swimmers not taking every opportunity that they have, especially around racing. I think after COVID, we kind of learned that we have to maximize every opportunity we have. So interesting tactics this morning, but I guess that gives her confidence going into tonight. Well, whatever caginess was going on this morning, if that's a word, uh, it's certainly not going to happen here in this final. They've got to go all guns blazing because the consideration time is fast and three of them can do it. So. There's no point in just doing the consideration time. You have to be top two. There's only two per country allowed to swim at the Olympic Games. It's not like athletics or other sports when you can have three. Great shot there of that little ledge that she just uh, put her feet on to make sure she doesn't slip when the gun goes. It's in the backstroke final. It's the big final. It's the Paris final. It's the women's 200 metres backstroke. The fastest seed. Annie Osram at Loughborough University in four, but either side of her, Katie Shanahan in three, Holly McGill in five, and Kathleen Dawson, the champion on the 100 in six. Yeah, Kathleen having a great start there. I think we can expect to see her go out quite fast. She is a 150 metre specialist, so definitely has that front end speed. We know Katie can bring it back hard as well. She swam in the 400 IM last night and picked up silver and showed real strength on that backstroke leg. So I think we can expect to see the race chopping and changing. Well, it's a very good start, 30.0 for Honey Osrin, 30.3 from Katie Shanahan. They're first and second in lanes four and three. All the black hats, uh, but the leader at the moment is Honey Osrin, and this is interesting. Osrin leading from Shanahan in second. Third is uh, Holly McGill at the moment, with Kathleen Dawson in fourth closer to us. This is the halfway turn. Well, Osrin is leading, and now what's going to happen? Is Shanahan going to come back hard? I'm not sure, Honey looks great, and you know, she was an amazing junior swimmer. She swam at Plymouth as a junior and recently moved to Loughborough University, which looks like it's paying off. She looks like she's pulling away from Katie again here, so it'd be great to see her get around her PB and dip under that qualifying time. Well, there's definitely a strategy from uh, Honey Osrin in the centre to go hard at the 100 turn. She's really working this third 50. 
I hope she's going to have a little bit left because it looks like she's working that very hard indeed. 61.9 of the 100 was fast. She's just gone, uh, what, a 32.7, faster than all the other women in this uh, final on that one. But what's she got left? Yeah, it's going to come down to the touch here. I think Katie's going to come back strong, but Honey's holding on really well there. So it's Honey Oswin in lane number four from Loughborough, but look at uh, Katie Shanahan's coming back. Also McGill's coming back, but Oswin still looks good. Well, this is a fabulous swim from Honey Oswin. It really is. Her lifetime best is 2.8. She needs to go under 2.08.91. It's going to be close. I think she's going to do it. Under 2.08.91, she's done it. Honey Oswin has won the 200 backstroke in underneath the consideration time. Oh, that's a fabulous swim. Second was Katie Shanahan. And in doing so, she's gone under the consideration time as well. <laughs> she looks just exhausted. Does she know she's done it? I don't know if she's shocked or exhausted, but it'd, it'd be nice to see a smile from Honey. <laughs> well, there's Katie Shanahan. There's no smile there. She comes second. I think she's probably, well, it's not bad. 2085 from Mary Shanahan is not bad at all, you know, but Honey Osram, the tactics got to the 100 and took off. Yeah, and I, I think I think we maybe expect to see Kate come back a little bit stronger, but both girls stop dipping under the qualifying time there, so that's the second consideration time for um, Katie this week. She has finished second twice, so it will be down to the discretionary picks of the selectors. Well, surely they can't ignore her. Second on the 400 medley, second on the 200 metres backstroke. Look at that finish, my goodness me. Osrin wins it, second is Shanahan, third is Holly McGill with uh, Dawson in fourth. And there we go, there's first and second. So the result confirmed then. Honey Osrin wins the women's 200 metres backstroke in under the consideration time. She's going to Paris and Shanahan, I'm sure she'll go with her. And they'll be talking to John Mason. Well, honey, it gives me the greatest pleasure to say this. You're off to the Olympic Games! Wow! That was a big swim. What's going through your mind? <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Feel it all. Well, um, I'd just like to thank Ian and the rest of the Loughborough team, as well as my parents up there, um, and my family watching in South Africa as well. Um, yeah, I was just so happy. <laughs> You know, you sort of took that out from the start. It was like uh, that first 100 was so quick. I was like, is she going to be able to hold on? You went out 51.9 in that first 100. Oh, 61.9, 61.9. My apologies, 61.9. Um, and I was like, is she going to be able to hold that, hold on to that? And you did. Did that back end feel rough? Yes, yeah. very much so. I think it felt relaxed, but I think that was just the nerves carrying me through. Um, yeah. But I'm glad I just held on, so... Yeah. <sighs> you did. Well, look, congratulations, yeah. British champion. And off to Paris! <laughs> now, Katie, uh, the second time you've hit that nomination time this week, uh, you're obviously putting in, in great performances. I know you were, you were chasing down Honey in that, that last stretch, but she just pipped you at the post there. So uh, talk me through that race and sort of what you're thinking. Yeah, I mean, it's not really what I've been training for. Like... <laughs> I feel like my training that I've been doing should have been a bit better than that, but you know, I'm really happy for Honey. It was a great race, and for her to be making her first Olympics, I'm really happy for her. And it was a good race with Holly as well, so well done to everyone. Yeah, well, look, congratulations to Silver Medal and hitting that nomination time. Holly over here as well, congratulations to Bronze Medal. A big swim, how are the legs? They're hurting. <laughs> they're, yeah. They're, I mean, it's a tough race, the 200 back. A lot of people say it's one of the toughest on the program, but you swam that really well. Like, did e everything go to plan? for your strategy? Yeah, strategy as well. A few turns were a bit, but <laughs> nothing's going to be perfect, so. Yeah, well, look, congratulations, a bronze medal. We love to see it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your British medalists, and of course, Honey Olsen going to Paris! Well, it's nearly a two-second lifetime best from Holly McGill to come second, uh, to come third there. Great swim from her. The silver medal going to... Uh, Katie Shanahan and the gold to Honey Osman and uh, well, it's a fabulous uh, medal presenter as, the, as well, isn't there? Yeah, we have Georgia Davies back on full side. Georgia's now working for Speedo, so she has been around a week and presenting a few medals as well.
Well, no rest for the wicket here. We're straight into the next race, the junior final of the women's 200 IM. Men's 200 IM, I should say. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll say that again. The junior final of the men's 200 metres individual medley. There's the full lineup. Edward Marcel Whittles, he's having a fantastic meet in lane number four. Uh, Chelsea Westminster have had the fastest seed in the 100 metres fly junior final, fastest seed in the 100 metres fly B final. And now, again, in this junior final, we've got some fantastic juniors. So, Marcel Whittles in four, in five it's Cherrington of Millfield, six is Oscar Bill Bow, Repton, seven is Porter of Camden Swiss, and eight is Matt Baker of West Suffolk. These juniors, like, they're just pumping out the uh, consideration times of European juniors, aren't they? Amazing. They are, yeah. I think we've seen, well, before this session, there was 51 times achieved, so I'm sure that's gone up again already, but Edward Marcel whistles in the middle lane from Chelsea and Westminster, his third qualifying time this morning, so having a great week there in lane four. Well, before this session, we've had 51 swims underneath the consideration time for the European Junior Championships, which are going to be in Lithuania, Vilnius, in July. Tunerai Junior box. Final for men. In the centre lanes in four and five, that's uh, Edward Marcel Whittles of Chelsea and Westminster, with uh, Connor Cherrington of Millfield in lane five. I think we can expect to see a really fast time here from Edward. He does have the fastest PB of a 203.8. He was slightly off that this morning, so I imagine he wasn't wasn't going all guns blazing. But he's got a great start here. He has a really strong butterfly, and I think we can expect to see him come back on the breaststroke as well. We had a beautifully flat butterfly. Didn't use any energy to go up and down, up and get to get air and down again. Really flat. All his energy being used to go. Oh, straight forward, a beautiful backstroke as well. Look how still his head is, Molly. He does, yeah. I think he's got a very mature kind of head on his shoulders as well, you know. He's very great technically. I know Lisa Bates is constantly plugging away at those technical points. So Lisa obviously used to coach Amy Wilmot and coached her to Commonwealth Games champion in the 400 IM. So definitely knows what she's doing on the medley events. Well, she certainly does and runs a, a very good ship at Chelsea and Westminster. I think they train here quite often as well, which is a fabulous pool. She used to be a coach here, but look at this from uh, Edward Marcel Whittles. Very good indeed. Starting to try and uh, catch uh, and eat into that lead is Connor Cherrington of Millfield, one name closer to us with that black hat. The yellow hat of uh, Philip Novaki of Jersey Tigers, a fabulous breaststroke. Went 61-4 on his hung breaststroke. A brilliant PB that was, but well, they just can't catch up Marcel Whittles, can they? Yeah, he's got a great, great breaststroke here as well, you know, quite a high stroke rate, not quite using the most out of that glide, but definitely putting us all into this freestyle now. Really high rate, breathing every two, really strong leg kick. Well, he's a great swimmer, is Marcel Whittles, he really is. He was the fastest junior on the uh, 400 medley. Great 200 fly, went 202 on that, and he's doing really well here. Just coming back, though, is uh, Connor Cherrington. Marcel Whittles dying a little bit. He's got to be careful here, he's going to get the touch. I think he's going to, though. Edward Marcel Whittles wins the junior final of the men's 200 medley and another huge lifetime best. That's a great swim, a full second inside his lifetime best. 202.95, great swim from him. Second, Connor Cherrington, and third, Oscar Bilbao. Really impressive stuff there from Edward. He didn't breathe in the last five metres, which at the end of a 200 is really impressive. So. He'll definitely want to put a mark down there. We do have two junior swimmers coming in the next heat. Well, it's time, 2.029, full second inside his lifetime best for Edward Marcel Whittles of Chelsea Westminster to win it. Connor Cherrington second, Oscar Bilbao third, Novaki fourth, Poulton fifth, Rapson sixth. Wow, quick, great juniors. We've got Britain at the moment, haven't we? We really do. Well, straight into the B final, Molly. This is coming really thick and fast. And Ben Harrison's the fastest seed from Loughborough, one of uh, three Loughborough University students in this B final. Yeah, Loughborough Uni really bringing the depth in this event. Um, coach, head coach over at Loughborough Uni is Andy Manley, but also over there is Ian Hume and Andy Wallace. So a great ship that they're running. Tease. Um, and yeah, looking great for this. We've got two European junior qualifiers in this that they both hit the qualifying time this morning of 2.05.1. So I'm sure they'll have seen Edward, um, Edward in the previous heat and will be aiming to beat that. 
certainly have the two juniors in lanes three and eight. Evan Davison will be closest to us. There he is. Uh, and actually, that's uh, that's from Sterling, one of the Sterling swimmers. There's two Sterling swimmers in this. Batoli in five and Greening in seven. There's Carey. Casey, I should say. Alexander Casey of Buckner in two. The B final of the men's 200 metres individual medley. Ben Harrison of Bluffra is the fastest seed right in the centre, but there was only one one hundredth of a second splitting Ben Harrison in four from uh, Andrew Batoli in five. Great start there from lane three. David, he's um, trying to qualify here for the European Juniors, really maximising the underworld phase there. So 50 fly, 50 back, 50 breast, and 50 free, and right at the top there. That's uh, Solomon Williams, first to turn from uh, Millfield. A really good turn, though, from the guy in lane two, Alexander Casey of Loughborough. A fabulous turn. Well, he went in oh, a couple of tenths behind, then he must have come up a couple of tenths ahead, so almost, what, a half a second up on the rest of the field, just on that flyback turn. Yeah, and I think that shows the importance of the underwater phase. We spoke briefly around it earlier in the week about the underwater phase being known as the fastest stroke because it is the fastest way to get through the water. So really maximising that and proving that it makes a difference on them turns. So in lane two, it is Alexander Casey over first with that brilliant uh, fly back turn and another great turn back to breast. So it's not an easy one. There's various different ways of doing that back to breast turn, but he was really effective. Yeah, multiple ways there. You've got the crossover turns, the touch turns, the, the backstroke um, flip turn, but really strong breaststroke leg here. It's getting really nice high out the water. Not quite getting those hands over the water on the recovery, but still really finishing the leg kick strong. Spotting the wall well. Oh, a little bit long into that wall, but coming off, making the most of that underwater phase into the freestyle. Can you spot it better? I mean, do, you, do you look on breaststroke a couple of metres out? Five metres, ten metres? What do you do? Yeah, I'd say from around five metres you need to start maybe readjusting your stroke. Because you have kind of such a long glide phase in between, you kind of have to prejudge it and know when you're going to land on the wall. Well, Alexander Casey up there in two is going well, but look at Ben Harrison charging in four. This is very interesting indeed. Who's going to get the touch? Casey in two, Harrison in four is mighty close. Oh, my goodness me. Well, in the end, it was Alexander Casey. He did hold on from Ben Harrison in four. Casey wins it. Harrison second. David Anderson third from Royal Wolverhampton School. What a tight finish that was. Teammates, and goodness me, just 18 one hundredths of a second splitting first and second. They're having a laugh about it. Look at that. <laughs> Great swim again there from David Annis as well, dipping under the European Junior qualifying time. He was slightly slower than Edward, so he's looking at the hot favourite for that. So Alexander Casey wins it. And now back to the studio with John. Coming over to our final uh, event of the Para program this evening, it is the Para Paris men's 200 meter individual uh, medley final. Uh, so basically in this race, it's multi-classification. So we have Bruce D, who is an S6. The rest of our athletes are S14. In there, we've got Cameron Verncombe and William Ellard. We saw them on the podium earlier tonight. Uh, we have Reese Darby as well. He won his silver at his very first World Championships in Manchester last year in this event. And I happened to catch up with him earlier today, down on pool deck, so let's take a look. His second fastest qualifier into tonight, but that looked like a pretty good swim to me. How was it for you? Yeah, it felt all right. I feel like I definitely have a bit more in the finals and just get some rest and recover quite nicely, so. For the big show, show in tonight. Now, you train with Craig Brees. Uh, how has that been? You know, he's got a great program there uh, for the Paris swimmers. You enjoy working there? Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Been working really quite hard up to this block, so yeah, it has been good fun. Well, look, I can't wait to see what you do tonight. Congratulations on a great swim. Uh, Reese Darby. Well, he will be in lane number five, the World Championship silver medalist from last year. First man out to the arena will be Bruce D. The S6 swimmer, there he is, young man who has been setting new lifetime bests all week, Bruce D. Let's see what he can do tonight in this I am. The rest of the swimmers are in the SM14 class, Nathan McManus leads them out 
tackle by Jack Milne. On the University of Aberdeen performance, a few power finals for them tonight. Harry Stewart, very strong breaststroker. Harry Stewart won the 100 breaststroke earlier this week. And there's Will Ellard back in the water again. That's whom he had earlier in the 100 fly. There's Reece Darby, a world championship silver medalist. Really came through strongly in the closing stages in that World Championship final. And there's Cameron Vernkum. He was also in that World Championship final, finishing in seventh place, but he was ahead of Reese Darby in the heats this morning. And he achieved the nomination time with Cameron Vernkum. There's Reese Darby. It's not at his favourite, but well, Cameron Vernkum's thrown down the gauntlet here. That 212 74 in the heats, and he took absolutely everything into it. So Lee Starby's been saving himself for this 200 IM. This is the one where he thinks he can achieve that qualification. That nomination standard 212.91 is the target. Cameron Vernkoom did it in the heats. He goes in lane four. Lee Starby goes in lane five. The two SM 14s. William Ellard, he will fancy his chances of dipping under that standard as well. And we will keep an eye on the progress of Bruce D as well. Not too far away from the nomination time for the SM6 class, 2.43.96. Bruce did a lifetime best in qualification. He's got to drop another three seconds or so, but the young man right up there at the top has been exceptional this week. Getting very close to nomination times for uh, a number of events. Well, we saw Will Ellard go out very fast in the 100 fly earlier, and he's going to do what he promised, it, what he told John Mason. He's gone out very fast in the opening stages. Cameron Vernkum, though, and then when they get into the second half of this 200 IM, he was very strong this morning. And Reese Darby just builds and builds as the race progresses. So the three main contenders in the SM14 class, almost in a row. One lane down, Harry Stewart, watch out for him on the breaststroke. But Ellard, first of the wall, one minute point three zero. Vernkoom in second, three star beat through in third position. Vernkoom now will be hoping to make a move on Ellard, trying to get ahead of the freestyle, the 100 freestyle world record holder, Ellard. Will be very strong on that freestyle leg, but Cameron Vernkoom has been exceptional this year. He went to the World Para Series in Aberdeen a couple of months ago. Some big breakthrough swims for Cameron Vernkoom at that meet, and he's followed them up here in London. They're all closing up now, but Vernkoom is going to lead them into the final 50 metres here. Darby's coming through, Ellard and Darby almost together. Vernkoom trying to hold off the big freestylers at the end here. Another fantastic racing prospect here. Ellard, the world record holder in 100 freestyle, coming back on Vernkoom. Darby coming back, the world championship silver medalist. And they've gone past Cameron Vernkoom. It's going to be between Darby and Ellard for the touch. It looks like it might be Ellard. Is it going to be under the nomination time? It is under the nomination time, all three of them. And the race isn't finished yet, of course. Still got Bruce D to look out for. But that's huge points totals there, 914 points. But let's go back to Bruce D. He's just about halfway down now. Can he challenge his nomination time? Not always the swimmer who touches the wall first will have the higher number of points. I think it might be in this case, but we'll just watch for Bruce D coming in. Nomination standard. He is looking for 243.96. He's just outside that. But it's another lifetime best there for Bruce D of Northampton. Another sensational swim from the young 17 year old. But what about the strength of this man, Will Ellard, at the front of the field? Well, sensational race there. It was all it promised to be. Great start there from Will Ellard. Very strong on the butterfly, as we saw earlier. They got into the middle part of this race. Cameron Vernkoon came into his own. 
as they hit the breaststroke. Burnham led by the freestylers, Rhys Darby, the world silver medalist. And Will Ellard, the 100 metres freestyle world record holder, just took them out with Bruce Dee coming through. Another lifetime best. Great swim there from Bruce D. What form he's been on. Here's Will Allard's supporters. It's his dad in the centre. And we do have confirmation of the result. What a result for the three SM14 swimmers. Will Allard, Reese Darby and Cameron Vernecombe. All nomination times. And they are now with John Mason. That was a fantastic way to finish the para program. Wasn't that a great race, ladies and gentlemen? All three of them, all three of you boys, William Reese, Cameron, have done the time, the nomination time. So I'm coming in here. Will, you know, you swam, you meddled earlier in that uh, 100 butterfly. You said you still thought you had something left in the tank. This is the hard one after the night before, so good honest effort there this morning and hopefully I can uh, get some rest and go a bit quicker tonight. Yeah, and we got you, obviously, we got Tom in there and Max as well, the boys going at it. It's going to be a great race. I know, I had the pleasure of watching Max get his British record back off me, yes, in the 4 a.m. <laughs> He's probably the rightful owner, though, yeah. in, all, in all respect, but um, yeah, you know, it'll be a great race. You know, there's plenty of boys in there that, you know, are capable of going fast. You know, Mark, 58. Max is 56, Dino's been on 56, so, you know, there's a, there's a good quality field and a lot of good young ones as well that I'm sure can drop when in the final as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited for it. It should be good fun. Able-bodied swimmers, for Paralympic swimmers, also for the European juniors. And look at this, well, there's actually uh, an extra swimmer in here. And tied for eighth place, Joel Thompson in lane number zero. 
Uh, with Will Riley in eight. They tied for eighth place with a 203 in the heats. Great that they put them both in. But here we go, Mark Sharanik. That's Charlie Hutchinson, actually, isn't it? That's uh, Charlie Hutchinson in one. There we go. Sharanik will be next to him. Hutchinson second on the 400 medley. Matt Ward, 18 years uh, age group record holder for this 200 meters individual medley. He's in seven. Sharanik, well, he got a silver medal at the Commonwealth Games in the Gold Coast in 2018. He's been uh, American College National Champion. Not too many Brits have done that. Here we go, Tom Dean, double Olympic champion, 200 metres freestyle, the 4x2 free relay. He's looking really serious here, look at that. Yeah, he definitely means business here. He's finished third last night in the 100 freestyle, so I'm sure he'll be looking to finish top two and get onto that qualifying time. Evan Jones there in lane three, produced a great swim this morning, a PB for him to get him into one of the centre lanes tonight. Uh, Max Litchfield, second fastest seed. He's on the train to Paris. The top three guys in this uh, final, well, in lanes four, five and six, I should say, because Evan Jones is third fastest seed. In lanes four, five and six, Scott Litchfield and Dean already all on the train to Paris. Here he is. The fastest man in Great Britain, the British record holder, fastest man in the history from Great Britain, the Olympic silver medalist, the most successful Olympian in British Olympic history in one Olympics when he won four medals, a gold and three silvers, including a silver in this, the men's 200 medley. What a final this is, Molly. Where, where are the medals going? Who's going to get the one, the two and the three in that order? Oh, it's a tough one to call. I think Duncan's always a great performer, so I think I'd put Duncan at gold, but I'm not sure I can split second and third between Max, Thomas Dean, probably Mark as well. They've all been under two minutes before. Well, uh, Evan Jones is not slow either in three. He's third fastest uh, seed into this final. The British record holder is the fastest seed in four. He's had a much lighter program. He used to do every single race under the sun every day, just pounding them out. Much lighter here, concentrating on his big events. Duncan Scott in four, Litchfield in five, Dean in six. What a final. final of the men's 200 meters individual medley it's the big one it's the Paris final there are eight Olympic medals split between these guys three golds and five silvers and right in the center well started quickly in lane number four is Duncan Scott he usually goes fairly comfortably on the right hand side of that shot in the black hat he really goes quite comfortably on the fly leg but looks like he's pushing it different tactics here we're seeing yeah probably trying something a little bit new but we know Duncan has a really strong breaststroke and freestyle leg, so if he's going to get out there and get an early lead to 100, I think we can pretty much guarantee him on the ball at the end of the race. Well, a great turn from Evan Jones in three. Very good indeed, so this is fascinating. In four, it is still Duncan Scott uh, with Evan Jones right next to him. Those two black hats very close indeed to each other. Also going well is Litchfield in the red hat in the centre, but the halfway turn now in this final of the men's 200 am Scott is over first, but only just from Jones in three, Litchfield five, Hutchinson in one, and Dean is only about in fifth place at the moment at the halfway turn. We know that both Duncan, Max and Thomas all have really strong breaststroke legs as well as freestyle legs, so it'll be interesting to see who can hold the composure down this length. Breaststroke's a really technical stroke, so holding on to that technique and getting the most out of every stroke is really important here. Well, Duncan Scott looking very good indeed, and now coming through is uh, Tom Dean. He's got a great freestyle too, so it's Duncan Scott turning first, Dean turning second, Litchfield turning third with Jones in fourth. Now the charge is on, 50 metres to go, the final 50 in this men's 200 metres individual medley. And the silver medalist from the Olympic Games, Duncan Scott's going so well here. He's going to win, no doubt about that. He's getting, he's getting attacked by Tom Dean in the red hat down closer to us, but he's going to win it by, well, he's going to win it by a metre or so. Duncan Scott's going to win the 200 medley, the time, 155.91. That's a super swim from him only just outside his British record and the first two finishers underneath that nomination time for the Olympics 
They're already going though. Duncan Scott wins the 200 medley. Tom Dean was second with Max Litchfield third. What a race that was. Great finish there from both Duncan and, and Tom. Um, as you said, Duncan's British record from the Olympic Games. And I imagine that's probably one of the fastest times that he's been since then. So I'm sure he'll be chuffed with that. Well, from the start as well, the tactics were really interesting to Molly. He normally goes comfortable on the fly, but great start, but he worked the fly leg. Yeah, he definitely worked it, and I think he tried to get as much oxygen as he could on the backstroke, and then really push the breaststroke, and then obviously his super strength comes on the freestyle. Well, it was fascinating, because his super strength is the freestyle, but Tom Dean was catching him up. That's uh, really interesting. Dean... Well, Dean's breaststroke is very good, but look at that. He definitely caught up uh, Dean just closer to us, but a good swim from him, 156.4, just outside of his lifetime best, so some very, very fast swimming. So confirmation of the result of the final final this evening, that men's 200 metres IM Paris final. Duncan Scott wins it, Tom Dean second, both of them underneath that nomination time to go to the Olympics, and those top three are going to Paris. Wow, what a race. And they're now talking to John Mason. Ladies and gentlemen, he did it in the relay the other night, but now he's going in an individual event. Give it up for Duncan Scott, off to the Olympics! Now, Duncan, uh, from the get-go, that you just took that out so fast, dominated that, it was like you, it, this was just yours. You knew you were, you were out and battling right to the very end. Well, maybe from your perspective, yeah, but, you know, it's a real competitive field and with some fast PBs in it, so, yeah, I knew it was going to be pretty tough. Exciting thing with IM, you know, people swim it in so many different ways, different strengths, I think that's what makes it so exciting, but also, you know, why I love it, so many areas to improve on, but, look, you know, 155 this time of the year, yeah. pretty happy with that. And we saw you and Tom uh, you know, on the world stage with Leon as well. It's, it's three of the best in the world looking like going to be going head to head again, hopefully in Paris uh, over the summer. How are we sort of looking at moving this, this on as we head towards that event? Yeah, you know, you mentioned the quickest in the world last year, you know, defending Olympic champion. So, yeah, no, it's a, it's a stacked event, I guess, like, like all the events. But, um, yeah, it's going to be... Uh, it's been interesting one come Paris, you know, the exposure and different things like that over the last year. It's, you know, it's a pleasure being able to race Leon, Dino all the time, getting in with Max as well. So, you know, I just enjoy racing at this type of level and, and hopefully I can produce something pretty good coming summer. Well, I hope you can as well. Look, congratulations. Booking that spot once again. Ladies and gen gentlemen, Duncan Scott. And Tom, look, another stellar performance there. These are world-class swims that you're sort of putting together up against some of the best in the world as well. Uh, talks through your race there, sort of what's going through your mind. Yeah, you kind of have to put world-class swims up against these guys. Because yeah. it's so competitive at the moment. You've seen the meet so far. It's one of the quickest champs we've had in a long time. So you've got to bring your A game to get top two and try and get your name on that team. But, you know, I knew I'd have a strong front end, I got on the breaststroke, saw Duncan and you know he's quick on that first hundred and then my goal is always chasing him on that free and we've had so many close races over the years, world champs, you know, both on the podium last year so yeah. I knew it was going to be a good race. It was amazing to watch as well and look, congratulations, another amazing swim. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Dean. <laughs> uh, Max, uh, come here mate, you, you did in the 400 the other night, you know, uh, I know you're sort of more comfortable uh, over that longer distance. Yeah. Took that British record back off Dunk, and he said to me this morning, it was rightfully his. <laughs> um, but another great swim for you. Yeah, no, I'm really happy with that, to be honest. Um, I've kind of struggled on that event yeah. the last few years now. I've never really I've been kind of sat around that two minutes mark all the time. So, yeah, to be nearly sub 58 there is good. Um, obviously, racing these boys are two of the best in the world at that event. So, I knew it was going to be a tough race to try and get, get top two. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that time. Um, yeah, um, obviously. See what the rest of the week we've got now. Two and three in the last day. So. And I have to say as well, you know, we saw your brother Joe book his ticket earlier this evening to Paris. Both the Litchfield brothers off to off to the Olympics. It's got to be an amazing thing to be able to <laughs> fans pumped. Amazing thing to be able to do uh, with your brother. Yeah, obviously we had the opportunity last last time in Tokyo, but honestly, I was down there watching the race, and you can't really see what's going on from down there. So this is no video on the scoreboard, and I, it was just a flat field like the hundred free last night. I just looked up and saw he'd won, and I was, I was screaming around poolside. It was amazing. Um, it was an unbelievable swim from Joe, and so happy for him. And uh, 
you know, he, he deserves it more than anyone. So um, just buzzing for him to be back on the team. Well, love to see it. Look, another fantastic swim. Good luck for the rest of the week. What an incredible way to finish the night. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your British medalists. <laughs> Three Brits all going to Paris. There, Max Litchfield won the 400 medley last night in a new British record. Jan presenting the prizes. Delighted to see her there. She, I think she's the best volunteer in the world, Jan. She's an absolutely fabulous lady. Nothing too much for her. There she is uh, shaking the hand of double Olympic gold medalist Tom Dean, silver medalist on this men's 200 medley, and of course, Duncan Scott. Four Olympic medals, gold on the 4 by 2 free really, and three silvers. Fabulous. Wow, oh, those guys. Wow. Utterly extraordinary. What a race that's going to be in Paris. So, back into the studio now, and back to John Mason. Well, I tell you what, uh, Molly, Ellie, what a night of surprises, I think I could say. Good ones, some people disappointed, some people over the moon. You know, we saw things that I don't think we expected to see. Yeah, absolutely, and we were just saying, like, there was a bit of a surprise in the 100 fly with Joe Litchfield winning, but amazing to see him and Max both qualified now. They're brothers, they, they both went to Tokyo together, so amazing, another shot at the Olympics for them. Yeah, it was fantastic, and on the power side as well, we saw some incredible races. I think my favourite of the whole night was the, uh, the Harvey and Linden race as well. Oh, it was just yeah. so fun to watch. And I think it's great to see those two swimmers who are competitors but also their personalities coming out as well coming out with those bucket hats that we see right there do you know what they're two such lovely guys and for me i'll have to say it my highlight was also bruce d oh, you know yes. he has had a cracking championships personal best in majority of the races that 100 meters brushstroke he broke the british records and then to be out there on his own in that race with all other s14s is so so mentally tough because you get the wave of them and also you're on your own you know yeah. us athletes we know what it's like to race we love a race but he's on his own out there but to come Again, personal best this morning, personal best tonight, and he's such a, I'm repping the S6s because I love them. I'm not being too biased, so, so sorry guys, because I am an S6 myself, but Bruce D is one of those athletes to watch. Yeah, I'll definitely be keeping my eyes on him. And you know, we what I think has been amazing about this is we didn't just crown British champions tonight, we've selected more people for our Olympic and Paralympic teams, which is incredible. Honey, I don't think she, she said, when we got out of the pool, we are chatting afterwards, and she was like, I think I went out too fast. My coach is gonna get mad at me, I went, I don't think he is. It worked, you know, like he might, but you're going to Paris. She couldn't believe it. Yeah, I know. I think we could see the shock in her face. We were like, come on, crack a smile, show us that you're happy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, amazing swim from her. She was an amazing junior swimmer when she was at Plymouth. And I think she kind of plateaued for a few years. So since moving to Loughborough, it's good to see her get, um, get back on form. Well, look, so much exciting stuff happened tonight. We hope you enjoyed it at home just as much as we did. We have only got two more nights of racing. It's the weekend. You've got no excuse. Stay home and watch us. Enjoy your Saturday night. We'll be back in tomorrow live for heats at 10 a.m. Or, of course, uh, you can tune in live in the studio tomorrow night for uh, more exciting guests and, of course, more fun racing from 6.45 p.m. From Ellie, Molly, myself, Paul and Andy, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.